Alrighty, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another special edition, late night edition, because we just did it spontaneously. Because uh, some of you may know of the banter going back on Twitter between some of the Ahmadiyya community and my previous guest, uh, Brother Bashir. But before we get in there, remember um, this is also streaming on Brother Bashir's channel, and it's going to be there as well, too. So make sure you subscribe. The link is down in the description down below so make sure you subscribe over to his channel um so that way he can you know build his sub subscriber base and get people to be aware of the information he's putting out there another quick um just uh, reminder, we've got a new feature, the membership feature. So if you want to join and access exclusive content, make sure that you do become a member or you can go to Patreon as well. Links for those are down below. And we also have the super chat function. If you want to get recognized in the chat, just make sure that you uh, use that function as well too. With all that boring stuff aside, assalamu alaikum and welcome back, Brother Bashir. How are you doing tonight? Wa alaikum salam, brother. Wa alaikum salam. Just Try, uh, trying to fight off all, all the MDs who want me dead, brother. They want me dead. <laughs> yeah, by the way, um, that's kind of why I put that picture in my um as my thumbnail because I was um there was a man by the name of Fakhruddin, and he was apparently the first ex Ahmadi killed because he uh, essentially was writing, was displeased with some of the things that were happening, and he became a vocal critic of Mirza Ghulam and his family. And I believe that's what happened. And then some overzealous person, I think Ab Abdul Karim or Abdul Kalim, one of the two, I forgot the name, he went out and basically killed, stabbed the guy out of rage. And basically the Khalifa at that time just basically praised him and said he did it out of his extreme love for uh, the prophet, which we was implying was Mirza at that time, right? Yeah. Um, so, so that and so it, this episode is in honor of that guy who was unjustly murdered in broad daylight. Um, and there's actually a picture of the man on his deathbed, um, um, believe it or not, like uh, just before he passed. There's a picture of now. Was he? Did he become a Muslim or was he a Lahori Ahmadi? Because I know that some of the Lahori Ahmadis they quote him as well too. Was he a Lahori Ahmadi? Is that what he became? No, uh, kind of, sort of. So, so his best friend was a guy named uh, Bashir Ahmed Misri, and uh, you had asked me if 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 these Ahmadis had their own state, how would it be? Well, they did. They had Qadian, and Qadian was ruled with an iron fist by the Khalifa. In 1937, um, the Khalifa was accused of uh, sexual immorality. It wasn't the first time. Um, back when he was a kid, at 17 years old, he was accused of the, a similar thing while his dad, the, the Messiah, was still alive. Um, so the, the, this guy, Bashir Ahmed Misri, and his friend, uh, uh, Fakhruddin uh, Multani, they find out about a homosexual ring in Qadian, where the Khalifa has these boyfriends, et cetera, it's nasty. It's, it's, it's so, so they start openly complaining about it and letting everyone know what the story is. Um, this guy's dad, uh, Bashir Ahmed Misri, he, he ended up be, be becoming a Sunni Muslim, Alhamdulillah, at the Woking in London. He was the, he was the Imam at the Woking Mosque in London. For the Lahori Amdis, he became a Lahori Amdi. His dad became a Lahori Amdi. I don't think, you know what, let, let me correct myself. I don't think Bashir Ahmed Misri ever became Lahori, but he might have uh, flew under the radar. So they, they made him the imam at Woking in, in the UK, and he turned on him. And uh, he gave that mosque into the hands of Sunni Muslims. And um, oh, the wow. Lahori Amdis were damaged forever. That was their headquarters. Oh wow! So yeah. he took headquarters and he put like a Sunni imam in charge over there. Exactly, because that the uh, <laughs> Woking Masjid in the UK was, was managed by a trust. Well, everyone who was in the committee was a Lahori Amdi until the late 1960s, um, um, and Bashir Ahmed Misri showed up, and then he found a loophole and he figured out a way to hand it over to the Sunni community because the Sunni community had a huge problem. They're like, you know, because that was the only mosque in London for a long time, in like the London area. That mosque and, and the Qadiani mosque. Is that ironic, brother? 
Yeah, and but I mean, so is that because of like the um, the relationship that the Qadianis had with the British government that they were allowed to like actually come to the UK very early on and kind of get foothold in London? Is that related to that relationship between them? Right, right. So, and and it wasn't just the UK. Remember, uh, they got access to Germany. They got access to America in 1920. Qasim Rashid says all these guys say this. We, it, um, they claim to be the oldest. Uh, American Muslim Association in the history of America, which it's not actually true because Noble Drew Ali had had already uh, started his movement. But but um, well, not, not, not only that, we know that there were Muslims who came as slaves to America, and there were Muslim right. communities that were here. So let's not take away from the African American experience, especially in light of BLM right now. You don't want to be telling uh, ancestors of slaves that their parents weren't Muslims anymore because they came to America, right? So about, from what we know about uh, the writings of one of the slaves that wrote in Arabic a biography about him, about thirty percent of the slaves that came on the slave ships were actually Muslims, and they kept their religion under under. You know, uh, in, in, you know, under the radar because they didn't want to. At that time, they were being persecuted for being, you know, black, or whatever. They didn't want that to add on. But anyway, the point being is, yeah, we've had Muslims in America long before the Ahmadi turn in the nineteen twenties. <laughs> yep, yep. So, so the Lahori Ahmadis got access to to a to a, to a mosque in the Woking that was built. It was the first mosque ever built in London. Um, it was like the hub of Islam. If you needed to read Eid prayers, brother, the Sunni so the Sunni community began to immigrate after World War II, and they mm -hmm. got this huge problem. They're like, we're we're praying behind Lahore Amdis or Qadiani Amdis. What do we do? Uh, these are the two options that we have in this country. So, um, um, it was a huge problem, brother. Uh, they got access early to even to Africa and and um, Indonesia and Malaysia um, the Malaysians were up in arms um, Mauritius Sri Lanka you name it they um, they even sent spies into Russia as a um missionaries to and and they got arrested and the British government like intervened and got them released oh uh, and your movement has yeah. been, been getting special treatment. Wow. So, so um, if I'm correct, there is a, a very large community of Ahmadis in South Africa, right? Not really in South Africa. Well, in in Africa, they claim to have a bunch of Ahmadis, oh, but no, no, I'm sorry, it's like Tanzania or somewhere, right? Like in that area, in, probably in East Africa. They they were given free free land and and, and free mosques back in the 20s and the 30s and the 40s and the 50s. So. Um, but but most of the African Amnes end up leaving, you know. Like in uh, Nigeria, they they had four or five splits where they split w w with the Halifa. So um, obviously they're not going to tell us any of that. Uh, they're not going to share that information. Just like uh, with the murder of Fakhruddin Mozani, it's not in any Qadiani Amdi publication. They tried to bury it. It exists in Lahori Amdi history because the Lahori Amdis were responding to it. Like what is going on in Qadian? So if it wasn't for the Lahori Amdis, it, it was almost gone. These pictures and the, the uh, and documents that I found were, were found by me and my team at the British. Um, well, I don't want to give out all, all my secrets, but uh, right. I was able to find them in some rare libraries. You know what okay. I mean? And and I search out rare content on the Amadea movement. That's how I know he he died of cholera because uh, Malana um, Abu uh, Kalamazad from India, if you know who he is, um, he wrote an obituary and said he died of cholera. You know what I mean? And I found the scan of the newspaper where he says that he died of cholera and it was never <laughs> objected, you know? And um, yeah. some of the first biographies, yeah. No, the thing is that I feel like they do a very good job at like covering a lot of the information um, historically about, like for example, when I went to go look up this, this the case of Fakhruddin, like it's, there's like hardly anything out there about him. I had they like go to like some Lahori website and get like a snapshot of a book that was written about the whole situation, but like it's really non existent out there when I go and look for this stuff. And I think they've done a pretty good job in censoring this information from the general public. And I think that's kind of the way they keep their image up. Um, but, but just as a follow up though, the reason why I brought this up is because. 
for those of you that are watching and are not really familiar with why I brought um, the brother back on was because, as you know, I put this stuff out on Twitter and immediately I had like this backlash from, not even a backlash, I would say overwhelmingly positive from the Muslims, but the Ahmadis were out there and they were just, I mean, all night, I mean, I had to mute my phone because they're just tweeting and tweeting and tweeting and like they're just nonstop. And the, and, and the thing is that it wasn't even so much that they were saying, hey, let's talk about the concept or invite me to your show. It was more like, hey, you know, Bashir is, uh, he, he, he works with the family folks and he's a drunk alcoholic. Like, he, you know, why would you bring him on the show? You know, he, you're working with the enemies of Allah on your show. And I'm thinking in my head, first of all, wait a minute. In my mind, uh, I don't have any proof of that. And number two, what does, and when I saw the clip of whatever they posted, it had something to do in 2015. I said, well, that's five years ago. I mean, a brother, so he doesn't do it. That was why I was comedy. Whatever, it doesn't really bother me. You know, the point is that, I mean, I go by your faith value, but the point is, is that they're trying to now resort to a slander campaign, which is, you know, instead of being able to off you, Right, as they did to some of the ex members, which they can't now because we live in and the, number one, they're a minority, right? They right. can't do that. Number two, they, they have a PR problem. And number three, you know, we live in the Western world where you can't just go merc somebody and get away with it, right? There's right. there's repercussions for that, right? Um, and then number four, it takes away from the whole narrative that enemies are persecuted people and that they don't, you know, that that you know that no that you know they're the peace loving people. Right. And I put it out. I'm like, so why are you, you know, there's no peace for you, no love for you. And I'm like, so what does that mean for me? Like what happened to your slogan? Like is it just war and, and like hate for me then? Like what now? You know what I mean? Like what are you talking about? You're contradicting yourself. So so why don't you right. tell me a little bit about what that whole thing is going on? I'm sure people and the listeners want to know like what is it exactly that um you know that that, that they're, they're referring to it. and why are they making like you know why are they bring up some old stuff for them too hey uh real quickly before you get um on the, do you think you could maybe turn on the um the speaker volume i think they're getting feedback from my mic in it's like bouncing back on if you're not using headsets so i think maybe that's why yeah i think that's a little better that's good all right go ahead uh y- y- you can answer the question now uh, yeah, and, and I'm hearing the static too. I, I just muted my, myself. Uh, I, I unmuted. I, I think I think we're fine now. But um, yeah, 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 yeah. So so where should I start? Uh, Damon Stengel needs medical uh, uh, treatment. He's got some serious psychological issues. The Amelia movement knows this, um, but they always find a token native. You know what I mean? Like they'll go to uh, Nigeria. They're looking to find one. Turn him into an imam and use him for marketing and PR. So uh, they got him to convert. He was an Islamophobe out of Oshkosh, um, Wisconsin, right? Um, and he hated Islam. He hated Muslims. He hated diversity. He's unemployed. He's still unemployed. And um, uh, he walked into an Ahmadiyya community, and they praised him, and they loved him. And so he ended up joining up. Uh, that's his story. And he liked them because... Um, they hate Muslims, so and so does he. So that, so that's still sort of his story, right? Now, <clears throat> why do they keep calling me an alcoholic? They got nothing else against me. I posted that picture of Dr. Abdul Salam drinking, and I found those pictures. They're not on any Amity website. I found them at an Italian, some some Italian university that uh, that he, that he was working for. They had them. I found him. I wrote the essay on, on Dr. Abdus Salam, um, how he was into white women and and loved alcohol. Uh, um, Dr. Weinberg said he had a bottle of scotch in his drawer in the 60s. Now, that's more than just a drink every here and there, you know, back and forth. When when you have a bottle of scotch in your in your. So, Oops, I think we... uh, some serious stuff right there. So. Uh, and then and I proved that Ms. Bauman lied about his opinions. So this hey, brother, I think we and it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So then, when 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 we asked them, what about Doctor Abdul Salam? And then they 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 deny it. In, and in fact, hey, brother, I can you can you move up for a second? Make seven videos attacking my person, and um, uh, he he used to be a local Jamaat president. He said I'm a fake Muslim. So that's what they say about all of us. We just had another guy 
Muhammad Yahya Han come on the Zaytun FM show, some lady uh, from Rabwa, a uh, quit Amadea. I think she's agnostic. I don't know. Like, we don't ask people. Like, we're just happy to get them out of there. And and then, you know, Allah will guide them if Allah chooses to guide them, right? So, um, yeah. so uh, hey, brother, I think this, your voice is, I think said, your voice is, why, why are you not supporting right this now. lady? She's making accusations yeah, of, of of sexual abuse from Rabwa. You know, they're like, she's an atheist. Why do you believe her? Et cetera. So they, they've attacked all of us. They, they attacked AK Sheikh. They attacked uh, Akbar Chaudhary. Um, there's a guy, Razi Kudrat, who has attacked all the imams who ever spoke out about Ahmadiyya. He's got a roast video of Muhammad Hijab. He's got a roast video of, you name it, brother. If anyone spoke out about them, and he's there, so they don't do the dirty work. Um, the, the Amdi Murabis and the community, they don't do it officially. They, they get these guys to do it, like Razi Kudarat and Damon Stengel, to do the dirty work. Just like they killed um, Fakhruddin Multani. There was no witness. There was one witness who was a Sikh, who, who they, they threatened him with death. He still went to court and said he saw it, and, and um, uh, that was what convicted him. And then, and then the Halifa uh, said the Janazah prayer. As out of respect, you know, the Halifa doesn't doesn't grace the funeral prayer that often. You know what I mean? So right. this is what they do. This is what Mirza Glam Amma taught them to do. In fact, uh, there was a Hindu guy named uh, Lek Ram who he had a Mabila challenge, again, a death challenge. He said, so Mirza Glam Amma would say, oh, you have a problem with me? You're going to die in 15 months. <laughs> uh, OK. Oh, oh, you're going to die. Not the regular way. Someone's going to kill you. So this guy, Lek Ram was murdered it's a mysterious murder and then um i did the research you know it's ironic he died in front of an amity the same guy who says he saw uh a mirza glam is sitting on a wooden toilet um a minutes before he died so remember they had to put him on that toilet they didn't have the bedpan that they could just put it underneath them they, they had to physically get him up and move him over to the wooden toilet because of because because of, of the technology. So that same doctor says he was working at the Mayo Hospital in Lahore when Lekrom came in there and he had two stab wounds, but he was still alive. So he you think that he often? But you think that he often oh, pretty um, much? I can't hear you, brother. I think you're muted. Oh, um, I think you need to hold on. I think you need to rejoin. Can you can you hear me now? Is that good? Um, Still can't hear you, brother. Yeah, I think you might need to rejoin the stream. Hold on, let me just put this in the. Um, I think mm. you might need to. Yeah, um, I think you. I think you have to rejoin the stream. I think you got to rejoin the stream. I don't know. Um, All right, brother. See. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm, I'm on my phone, so uh, I'm gonna. Uh, uh, um, log in from my PC. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. So we'll just wait for him to come back. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, we were having some uh, technical difficulties on his phone. So for those of you that are joining in, welcome everybody. By the way, welcome everyone. Nas MacBook Macabeer. Welcome Waffles Craft. Um, let me. Uh, we'll, we'll get to some of these questions, inshallah. Right when he gets back in. Sorry, I think we had some technical difficulties. How is the sound volume now? Is this better for you guys? Because I know that it was kind of crackling a little earlier. Um, so I think we'll go ahead and get that. But just so you guys know, we did this stream. Why? Because. Um, well, first of all, because uh, you know I'm getting a lot of pushback from the Ahmadis on uh, on 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 um, on, uh, on on Twitter. All right, all right. Can you hear me now? Absolutely, absolutely. All right, welcome back. Yeah, are you back on the PC or are you on the phone? I'm on my phone. I'm on my phone. I, I couldn't find the link. So, but yeah, this this um, this will be fine. Okay. Where were we? Well, I mean, I heard everything you said. I just, I just, well, we were talking about the the guy Luck, Luck Ram. So, do you think that he, that this Ahmadi guy who was a doctor at Mayo Hospital, you think he offed this Hindu well, guy? Well, I don't know what to think. I, I posted the data. I mean, he's he's the in the emergency room. He's the only doctor there. This guy comes in suffering from a stab wound. He lays him down. He could off him easily. 
He's the only doctor there. And, and I think they said some other doctor came later, but he wrote a secret letter to Mirza Ghulam Ahmed at Qadian. And, and he, he said how Lekram on his deathbed was, was saying, Mirza Ji, oh Mirza Ji, please help me. Because the doctor was also named Mirza. So, so he made a mockery of that. And he personally wrote a letter and told Mirza Ghulam Ahmed exactly what happened. And Mirza, they never spoke about this ever again. It, it came out in 1923 when, um, um, so the doctor, he ends up becoming a Lahori Amni. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, wow. He didn't join the Qadiani. So um, after the incident of Lek Ram, a month later, some other guy shows up to, the, to Dr. Clark, who was a, a, a Christian that and Mirza Ghulam Amin had a debate with. He didn't have a debate with him yet. He had a debate with a guy named Atam, and he was there. Well, uh, Mirza Ghulam Amin wanted everyone dead who was there. So this guy mm. shows up and he says, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed told, sent me to kill you. And, and the, the, the doctor's like, oh my God, like what? So he calls the cops. <laughs> he immediately files a case. He goes, this guy just comes in here. Uh, you so, know, white like, people don't play, bro. They say, where's the police officer? What's going on here? Like, they don't play. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, like somebody just tried to kill me. <laughs> well, what he didn't understand is Mirza Ghulam Ahmed's untouchable. You're not going to get him convicted. You know, so this is, and this was so, under British India, right? So obviously, he had to with the with the um, with the British Indian government at that time. So, like the likelihood of him getting um, in trouble would be very slim, essentially. Right, right. right. So, so Mirza Ghulam ends up beating the case. Uh, um, some so so here's what what would happen: they'd bring in a British military officer to be a judge. Right. And then he would rule on any case. So it's all corrupt. Like, what are we wow. talking about? You know, so, so, so thinking about this, like in, in modern terms, Rosa Ghulam Ahmed was a gangster. I mean, he was a straight up, he was a, he was a boss. I mean, he was having people off. He, he had people on payroll. I mean, he was making moves in British India. And that kind of makes sense as to why he didn't really want why they passed the fatwa in his, in his fatwa not to rebel against the Indian British government, right? Because apparently that would be a threat to his uh, security, like to his comfort, right? If you did that, right? Because a lot of, a whole lot of people were, um, you know, uh, were benefiting by being cozy with the crown, right? They were able to get their businesses, their, um, they can get education, access to certain privileges. And I'm going to go out on a limb here and assume that, you know, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed was one of these people that, well, you know, was, was on the receiving end of those special privileges. And, I, and I'm sure that the, the British government in their strategy of divide and conquer were certainly using his ideology to, number one, uh, ease down the tension and hatred towards the British government, because there's a lot of, um, you know, resentment towards the British government after 200 years of oppressive rule, famines, you know, looting, all these things. Uh, and then number two, uh, I, I believe that they were also spies for them. Right, they they were able because they looked like the common population. They could blend in. They spoke the language, uh, and they had a motive. Right. So, what better people to make as informants among your own community? Uh, and that kind of translates to today in America. Today, it's happening. <laughs> right, right, right. So, so <laughs> here's my example for that. When when I was in the U.S. Air Force and 9/11 happened, um, they asked me to be a translator because I had written that I know some uh, Punjabi Urdu. Right. And I was like, heck no, I'm not doing it. So I, I remember walking into uh, captain's office and I was like, I was like, Captain, I don't speak, I barely speak English. My English is Ebonics. Like these guys <laughs> don't even understand me. I don't know it. And he knew I was lying. But I'm not, I'm not an interrogator, I'm not a snitch. So I'm not gonna do that, no matter how much more the pay is. And they were offering me back then, you know, like six figures. And I was like, no, nope, oh, I'll fix it. Believe me, I know. When I was traveling around the world, I got offers from, you know, DOD contractors where they were willing to pay $200,000 for an Arabic translator. Like, basically, and it was not even like being in the field. It was like just listening to these tapes. 
Like that's pretty much what they wanted you to do. And, you know, at the core of it, man, it's just grimy. You know, anyone with a little bit of honor, you know, is going to be like, hey, wait a minute. You know, this is not just like, it's not like it's guaranteed information from somebody. It's just random people's phone calls, communications, people's personal stuff, right? That's something that, that's a line for me, right? Because, you know, in Islam, we value privacy. Like, you know, no government can come into your home and find out what you're doing. It's only about the public. Whatever you do privately is, is between you and God, right? And that kind of goes into my next thing, too, where they're trying to character assassinate you and not really worry about the arguments. They're going to say, oh, look what his brother's saying about him. Look at his, you know, there's pictures of him. or I mean, there was a video of him talking about this. Or look at that hashtag he put out, you know, come, you know, get drunk. Or whatever. All these things. And I'm like, F let's say all of that is true. Right. Let's say that, you know, God forbid, let's say you're a raging alcoholic, whatever, who cares? Right. OK. Point being is what uh, from an argument perspective, what does your character have to do with the information? Is the information accurate or is it false? And once you can prove it false, then you can go into, well, you know, the reason why he did. Well, look at it. Look at his character. You can then go after him if you want to. But first, at least tackle the argument. Right. Because, you know, I get it in the modern world. We're not in a formal debate. There's you don't have to worry about ad hominems and all this stuff. But at the very least, why don't you deal? Because, you know, that guy you're talking about, that crazy, um, you know, the uh, radical whatever who became Ahmadi, Damien. Yeah. Um, he just comes in the video in the live stream, doesn't even comment about anything we're talking about. If you look on that's that's how we first brought attention is that he put a comment saying, oh, look, he's a drunkard. Like just. Not even like, not even addressing the things. And, and I think like, so, so just, just for the Twitter community and continue they're, they're arguing, like, I'm gonna be like, let me just pull something up here. Like, like some of my Twitter feed, like they're saying that, um, watch, I'll give you an example. Oh, he never, he never said he didn't drink. He didn't say that he doesn't drink anymore. And I'm like, okay, well, I, I asked you on the show and you said yes. So for, for this individual, hold on, let me just pull up this tweet because he's just kind of like, I don't know. Anyways, um, why don't you just for the, for the, for the clarification of the whole, um, you know, Twitter community, let me ask you directly, all right? Are you an alcoholic? Do you drink alcohol on a regular basis? Like, are you some kind of drunkard that always wants people to get drunk with you? No, nah, man. I, I don't do any of that stuff. I don't drink alcohol, wine, beer. I guess there's like different categories, man. I'm an athlete type of dude. You know what I mean? I eat salads all day, man. Look, <laughs> I'm into running. You eat salad. You know? It's hard. Watch, they're going to say he eats bacon salad. He has bacon bits on his salad. They're going to start saying something like this too now. So why don't you clarify and say you don't have bacon bits on your salad either, just so they know. They can't yeah. make some salad. <laughs> hey, 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 look, my salad comes from a halal place. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and check this out. Amnes don't eat halal. Uh, um, so when, when I oh, was wow. growing up, we, we would eat at KFC. We would eat at Taco Bell. It was nothing. I was never told that that eating beef or chicken at a fast food place was ever a problem. It never happened. Once I became a Muslim about three, four years ago, uh, I, I learned, hey, you can't do that. So I, I found the halal. There's so many in the Bay Area. You would have no reason to go and eat anywhere else. You know what I mean? So um, Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, no, I, I, that, that's very really interesting to me, though. Wait, that's very interesting to me though. So they don't teach you to eat like the biha, like the biha halal meat. Like you don't have to worry about eating. Like I mean, like you could just go walk into like I don't know, like um, like a like a like a, a, a Chinese joint and eat meat from like some kind of pagan. You could you could go eat meat from them. They don't care, brother. Brother, my dad. We 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 had a tire shop. The gas station next door would have those burgers. Those uh the the ones that you could warm up, oh, man. The microwave, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, uh, and we I didn't even eat burgers, but you know uh, I had another brother who who would eat like it was nothing, bro. It was nothing. It's not a big deal. <laughs> so so I'd say that part of it, um, I had to learn. But as far as the alcohol, I don't even smoke, brother. I look, I'm trying to live till I'm, you know, like. Like I'm trying to be, be a runner till I'm 80, 90 years old. I, I want to live long. You know what I mean? So I don't do those yeah. things, you know, and I'm not like naturally skinny. So I really have to work at it. And all these guys know that, you know, and um, I, I even had a family member say that. He, so he's, he's the one spreading all this. 
I have one who's like a double cousin who's saying all this stuff. And then I have another uh, a close uh, family member who says, I don't know how to read the Quran. You know, but then he'll praise Damon Stengel's Quran. Damon Stengel cannot read the Quran. It's bad. If you ever no, but wait a minute. I, 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 I forget about Damon. I mean, look, he's probably some average white guy. And I'm like, okay, fine. You know, maybe you're a layman. Bro, the main Khalifa today, they call him Khalifa, he can't recite Quran. Like, bro, exactly. I, I put a clip and he was stuttering, like, oh, no, he's stuttering. So I pulled a different clip where there was no stuttering, but even just his pronunciation of the Arabic language. Like, I'm not saying that, you know, fine, he's, you know, in the pack, some people have different ways to pronounce some things, fine. But what I'm saying is, like, I mean, just saying, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim, like just saying the ha or, I mean, just the articulation, makharaj, as we say, tajweed. In the Arabic language, like you would think the Khilafah, the Imam, the like the leader of the community, the one who gives religious, you know, ju- you know, verdicts to you, edicts and things like that, he should at least be able to pronounce Arabic, right? I mean, I mean, like, come on, man, like, and you can't. There's no way you can criticize somebody for not being able to read Arabic when your 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 head honcho. You know, he can't read Arabic either. I mean, he, I mean, he doesn't know how to pronounce these things very well. Let's just be honest for a moment, right? So that whole argument is, is, and let's say you don't know how to read the Quran properly. Bro, there are tons of people, there are Arabs who can't even read the Quran properly. That doesn't negate the argument. And what does that have to do with the fact that you're reading stuff in plain English? Like this stuff you're bringing out is not something in Arabic. I mean, do you read Urdu, by the way? Um. I can read Urdu just, you know, a little slower than, uh, than like okay. a 10th grader. And high, you know what I mean? Like I'm not, I'm not collegiate. Okay. No, I'm just wondering, no, because I noticed some of the, there were some Urdu clippings on like your, your blog. So I was just wondering maybe if you were doing the research and stuff, and that's fine if you don't, but what I'm saying is a lot of these people, they don't read that either. Right? Like, I mean, I, I, and here's also speaking of that, here's the funny thing. I saw some black dude who became a reader, I guess, the, or a convert to Ahmadiyya. And it's funny to me that, the dude is speaking Urdu, but he doesn't know Arabic. Like, why would you study Urdu out of all the languages that you can learn when you become a Muslim? You could you want to learn Arabic, right? Like, why are you speaking Urdu, bro? Like, why did you take the time to speak Urdu and not learn Arabic? And maybe he does. Bro, I used to have this video. huge problem in the Amadiya Mosque. These guys would just talk in Urdu. And I'd say, why are you promoting Urdu words? We all need to learn Arabic. So, so my family member, who's real close, who's spreading all this, that I can't, can't read the Quran, we presented all this to him. What about your Halifa? He says, no, my Halifa is Arabic is perfect. He's in denial. He cannot admit to it. They just cannot. Their imams are terrible. Brother, when I went to a mosque and I heard the Arabic tajweed from the imam, I was like, where am I? Because we never, I never heard it that good. It was always yeah, so let me, let me, who, Who's the name of that guy on Twitter you're saying that's uh, posting all these reputation videos? What was the name of that guy you said? I forgot you mentioned him on Twitter. Not, not, yeah, not uh, Daniel. Uh, uh, Razi Kudrat and, and, and his website and YouTube channel is Amity Answers. Okay, so there's another guy that that um has like this. I think it's not him, but he quotes him a lot. Where um he's making these videos with like the green screen behind him, and he's got like the little you know verse from the hadith. Like, look here, look here, point there. I don't know. And then, anyway, that guy was actually trying to give us a hadith lesson, uh, and like you know, and I'm looking at the video, and he has it all wrong. Like he's oh yeah, the the hadith not the most perfect moment, and you know he's like just. I mean, from, from a person who speaks Arabic, no, bro, you, you're mispronouncing words. Like, and, and, just, and, and the funny thing, they pronounce, like, they pass it off like it's, it's like, you know, it, it's normal. Like, they're, they're so confident in, in what they're saying. Like, bro, like, you know, people laugh at this. Like, honestly, I could just do a whole video laughing at the way that they think they know it's a genius. I'm not going to do that because it's not kind of an insult. I mean, just you know, playing around. It's not really of, of importance. There are plenty of Muslims out there who don't speak Arabic and they still believe in Islam. I don't believe that you have to be the best in Arabic, but when you claim to be like our 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 Imam Muja, he was the uh, you know he wrote the best tafsir in English. He did I mean or in Arabic. He has the best one. No one can challenge him, bro. Honestly, an Arabic speaker wouldn't even take what you're saying seriously. The fact that you don't the difference between khatam and khatam. I mean the, these basic simple things that you talk about, you don't know the difference of. Right, right, right. But, so, I mean, it, it, it all starts with Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. He didn't know Arabic, so he made up a story 
and says that God taught him Arabic in one night. <laughs> he, yeah. he says his God taught him 40,000 roots of the Arabic language in one night and made him a scholar wow. of Arabic. So, so, so that's wow. where it all starts. That's where it all starts with Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. He didn't know it. He never led no prayers. Uh, his Arabic came with a Punjabi accent. It was bad and terrible. Um, so um, all of his um, his sons and his his grandsons all had the same problem. They've never made it a big deal. They're imams. Uh, there's an Irish imam, uh, Ibrahim Noonan, who I beef with, and he's he was part of the same group who called me alcoholic and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, he he can't pronounce a ghari like. Like the, there's a roast video of him not being able to pronounce a Gadil Magdube or something. He because he rolled the R. You know what I mean? And look, brother, um, these are their moms. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know. So yeah, right. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So I was saying, my family member, his 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 tajweed is terrible, and he challenged me. He was, and and now he's ta he's 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 challenging another ex family to a, a pronunciation contest or something like that. It's like, dude, you got to stop. You really, but but it's their competitive nature that gets them in trouble. You, you know what I mean? And, and uh, um, you know, the, the, there are a lot of fights at Amity Youth uh, um, um, events because a lot of the Amities get overzealous and over competitive. Um, and 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 this guy Damon has admitted to being overly competitive. And brother, that's not Islam. In Islam, you you're not supposed to be like that. Muhammad Ali, the famous boxer, when he was with the nation, he called himself the greatest. When he became a Sunni, he never did. He he learned you're not supposed to do that. So, um, and remember, the nation of Islam, they were invented out of Amadiya. They read Amadiya Qurans and invented their own ideology. So, um. And and they don't have good Arabic to tweet either. <laughs> yeah, wh why don't you take a look at this question by Abdul Ghani? Um, why did anyone follow the Mirza guy? Was he the head of his village? So is Qadian the area he was born in? I'm assuming. So was he an influential figure, or his family influential in Qadian? Uh, uh, uh Multani. No, 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 no. They're talking about why did anyone follow the Mirza Ghulam Ahmed? If you can see the question at the bottom, um, they want to know was Mirza Ghulam Ahmed was he like a leader in Qadiyah, like before he started this movement? Was his family prominent? Like, why did why were people inclined to follow a guy that seemed so obscure and like just completely out of his mind? About like, I mean, if I saw somebody calling himself, you know, Mary. And then you know, pregnant Mary, and then the, the child of Mary all the same time. I, I get a headache just by the triunion nonsense of the Trinity. Like this is just a whole different level. This is like you know, different angles, right? So I would be like, "Yo, this guy's nuts." You know, what I mean, like he's crazy. So I guess what they're asking is, why, why did the people, why, why did people even pay attention to this guy? Uh, was he of yeah, an important? Yeah, uh, um, he was, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. So uh, he was a tax collector, a, a, a zamindar. He came from a zamindar family. He had tax rights over seven villages that were uh, right next to Qadion. So you need to get in good with the guy who's collecting the tax money. That's A. B, if you were an Afghani, the British government would give you a job. Easy, easy. Like mm. now they know how they, they trust you more than everyone else. So So people would just come and join because of the financial um, um, situation. Now the British government, you're with them instead of with, with you know, can you imagine what uh, what jobs the average Muslim was getting in those days? Nothing, bro. Like, you're, you're screwed. You're not going to get any opportunity. There are no jobs. They moved all the factories overseas. Like, <laughs> now right, you're a consumer. Right. In British India, the Indians were consumers. <laughs> and that's it, you know? And... <laughs> And uh, um, talking about business, that's why YouTube and Google and all these, uh, they don't get access to China because that's 1.2 billion customers or 1.5 billion customers, right? So, um, uh, uh, and um, that's why America can collect so much tax revenue is because we have 300 million consumers and America is the number one consumer market in the world. And, and like California is the number one state that's the biggest consumer market in the world. So um, if, if, if you sell anything 
and you're selling it in America, you're gonna you're gonna make a lot of money uh, versus selling it in a place like Russia. You see what I mean? So, right. You know, and and, and it doesn't help. You know, and it does help that you know people splurge and they they want to get the new this and the new that and they don't have the money. So in 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 India, people don't do that. <laughs> in China, people right. don't do that. <laughs> they don't live like. You know, I need to get this purse immediately, you know, or I got to get these shoes. Like the consumerism isn't really there. It's more about survival rather than consumers. In America and the Western world, we're kind of comfortable and taught, you know what, you need a new, you need, you need new shoes every season. Like you need new boots right. for the winter, you need, right? Uh, or you need a new iPhone next year because phones get bad. All you got to do is listen to the music and the music is telling yeah. you, you, you got to get all the new stuff if you want to keep up. Right. So, um, yeah, and yeah. that that actually drives the U.S. economy, and is the reason why our defense budget is so high because we consume so much and everyone's in debt. But that's a different topic, right? So, so right. Um, yeah. But let, let me let me just kind of uh, segue to a different question. We got this early. I was trying to go up and find it. Now, there's always the question is, what are your opinions about per, the persecution of Ahmadis in Pakistan? Now, I, I, I wanted to address this question because I think it's particularly important. Why? Because I think we touched on a little bit earlier in the last episode or last the show that we did. Um, and, and I wanted to get your take because I saw some information on your blog about the... Now, I'm not denying that there are um, so, uh, you know incidences against the Ahmadi community uh, or Qadiani, whatever, Lahori or not, um, murders of them. I'm sure there are. I'm not denying the validity of any of those stories. But what I'm saying is that it seems to me that at the same time, some of these stories and numbers have been exaggerated in order to gain sympathy and uh, asylum preferences by the community themselves um and and so i wanted you to number one talk about a little bit about what your opinion generally is about the persecution of ahmadis in pakistan and maybe even largely other places and then what is um you know what is the uh what, what is the, you know what is what is a, a broader question is uh, how accurate is that information sure sure so so this is a touchy um, situation. I, I feel for all the, all the common Amadis in Pakistan, the innocent um, Amadis who are caught up in this whirlwind of the Mirza family. I think the Mirza family doesn't care and they're throwing Amadis under the bus. Uh, um, for example, um, after 1984, um, the law was passed. Amadis can't have minarets. They can't have the, um, the kalama on their, on, on, on their mosque, which I'm not saying I agree with, but it's the law, right? They should have went out and changed all that because the building code, it, it, it's like um, having a building in America, you know, and, and the uh, state says, you know, uh, the minaret's too high, which is that they do that here in America, right? So um, they, they don't comply. So in my opinion, they're throwing common amenities under the bus, and it's so sad. It's, uh, you know, these are innocent people. Um, the Lahori Amdis have are have a di totally different experience. They don't have all this happening to them. They don't do a dawa as much. So, at, from what I researched, the persecution is self-generated, and without the persecution, Amadia has no validity. Like I even found uh, quotes from the Fort Talifa where he said, "The persecution is a blessing. It, it's given us press. It's given us access." It's given us uh, so much. So he, and he even said, wherever there's persecution, we have growth. But where there isn't persecution, we don't have any growth. For example, in India, there's no growth. Because in India, they're considered Muslim. They got free reign to, to, do, to, to, to go out and get converts. But they have nothing. They're, they're, they've whittled so, away. So it's, so it's kind of like a, a way to gain sympathy and then use that sympathy to then turn around and get favors get close to the government. Be a protected minority status, so so forth and so on. Global attention, stuff like that. Okay, uh, uh, there's a question I want to ask you uh, here. Um, I was watching a big Ahmadi event on YouTube, and all of a sudden, when I see Ahmadi singing in Albanian Nasheed, I was shocked. You know, if there is an Ahmadi present in the Balkans, in the Balkans. Yeah, like Albania, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Serbia. Like, you know, if there's any Ahmadi, like a large Ahmadi presence over there. Because apparently yeah, there was yeah. a, a, an Albanian Nasheed in Albania. Right, so. right, right. So, 
so here's what they did. So uh, they got access to Albania, I think, in the 50s and the 60s. But when the Bosnian War happened in 97, they sent their Murabis into the refugees. Here's what else they do. They've targeted the, uh, the, the Muslims in China, and they want to go help them. But not help them, convert them. They're looking for refugees so they could convert them oh, the to Uyghurs. Amadea. Oh, so they want to take the Uyghurs from the Chinese government to, hey, we'll take them off your hands, give them to us, and then end up doing that. And so it's kind of like the prosperity Bible type thing. You come to us and we'll help you. We want to help you, but we'll give you some food. But you gotta, you got to learn about uh, us, too, essentially. Right. right? Right, right. Okay. So, so uh, uh, during uh, 1997, they they were in Bosnia, and uh, they were trying to get converts. They they must have hoodwinked a bunch, and you know uh, maybe they hoodwinked a thousand, and only 20 remained. And of those 20, maybe 10 became super um, devoted because these people changed their life. So they've dedicated yeah. their life to them, and maybe they they were singing something for them. They. They got a Nigerian singing uh, Urdu Nazims, and they'll post that on YouTube. And it's the weirdest thing. They're like, aren't, aren't you Niger Aren't you from Ghana or Nigeria? You memorized an Urdu Nazim? Yeah, I mean, I find it to be crazy that you know that they're speaking Urdu before Arabic. Like, I'm just, one, I'm, just, I'm just, I'm still like perplexed by this. Like, you know that they're still doing that. But let me ask you this though. Um, so, well, that's, by the way, just a. Quick commentary that's quite interesting because it's actually the Sunnis that went over to Bosnia and Chechnya to help, you know, uh, them while they were being oppressed. Like they actually fought to defend those people. And then here comes the Murabi, you know, you're scooting on in after everything is done. The heavy lifting was done and they, they freed the Bosnians and Chechnya people along with obviously different coalitions. And they were trying to push this stuff, which is uh, kind of ironic to me. But Anyway, so we have a special guest, and I think maybe he got this from uh, from the um, from the claim. So apparently, there's a guy named Ravi Noman. Are you familiar with him? He's saying he claims he can read Quran. He wants me to make you recite Quran live. Now, look, Ravi, listen. Um, if you want, you can come on the show. I'll give you a link to you. All right, because to me, to, to be honest, it's irrelevant of uh, about whether uh, he can recite Quran or not. What does that have to do with the information that we're talking about? And if you want to answer that question, I'll, I'm going to go ahead and put that link right here in the YouTube stream. stream. If you'd like to join in and, and, and explain to me why it's relevant, whether he needs to recite Quran or not, it's in order to counter his claim. Because I can guarantee the majority of the South Asian community or even, even African or Indonesian, majority of them cannot recite Quran properly. So I don't understand. Right. You, you would never call them non-Muslims, right? So what does that have to do with the information? He, this man never claimed to be a scholar. He never claimed. He actually admits he's learned. Actually, he's probably admitting that he <laughs> that he was probably misled under Ahmadiyya. Didn't even know he had to eat halal meat, right? So the yeah, man is learned. I didn't know a lot of things. Right, right, right. So the point I'm saying is, I don't mind your criticism, but I'm saying, why don't you join the stream and explain to me first? Explain to us. Why he needs to recite. Okay. Oh, Damon is here. Let me bring Damon on. Okay. Sure. There we go. What's All up, right. Rashir? How are you doing? Damon. Okay. How okay, hold on. Calm down. Relax a little bit. There's no reason to get excited. Rashir, How can you recite Quran for us? Wait, listen, Damon, can you calm down for a moment? Because what, what does him have to do with the reciting Quran have to do with the points that we're making? I'm just asking him a simple question. Okay, I know, but I'm no, saying so he, claims, he claims that I'm an Islamophobe, so I want him to prove that I'm also an Islamophobe. But first, he needs to recite the Quran. No, no that, that's not how. Wait, that's not how we determine who's a Muslim, though. I'm just asking. Yeah, but you know that, right? That's not how we determine whether someone's a Muslim. Let, let me show you how we determine who someone is a Muslim. He messed up uh, hey. Africa in his stream with Zaytun FM. Okay, hold on one second. Let me first establish that he's a Muslim. Uh, do you believe, okay, Bashir, that there's no God but Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger, his final messenger? Of course, of course. So th that is the testimony of faith. So in that regard, he is a Muslim. Do you disagree with that, Damon? Of course I do. Of course I do. Because he gave shout outs to reason on faith. He gave shout outs to doubting Ahmadiyya and he gave shout outs 
to barbs, all are ex-Muslims. So that's it, proof oh, that he's it, an atheist. Why is it a proof that he's an atheist? <laughs> Bashir, you know what I'm saying is true. You are an atheist. I'm asking Dang you the why. Is it, wait, wait, wait. If, if I give a shout out to, listen, I'm going to give a shout out to you, Damien. Damien and as a matter of fact, well, he, Damien, actually I'm, retweets, he actually retweets from atheists who abuse the Holy Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I retweet some atheists too and they make valid points because it doesn't, it retweet doesn't mean I believe anything he said. It could be a point. Yeah, what I'm saying yeah. is, Damon, you, you need to go see, see a psychoanalysis. And people who do psychoanalysis, you need medical help, Damon. The Amadeo movement Gap needs lighting. to step in and get you some help. You need help, brother. <laughs> we're, we're here to help you. Look, you got some problems. We know you got some problems, man. There's some wrong, and I can see you. that smile on your face, Bashir. Yeah, hey, you're look, lying because you're funny to me, man. You're you're a funny guy, <laughs> and all all we do is pray for you and smile, brother. You and all them other guys, you got a thought. Here, listen, and, listen and to this guy. He actually created an account guys. called Amadi's Exposed, and it's a troll account of Bashir Shaw. Go oh, look so, at so it, so guys. All now, this on Islamic conduct, bro. You're Islamic conduct. How is that on Islamic? You know, it's it's so explicit in conduct, you know. Did you know, Bashir, that according to the book of Hadith, those who use obscene language are not true believers? Here, I'm going to read what it right now. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, uh, do you know what the word Kutiya means? Mirza Glam never said the people who don't believe. Yeah, why, why did Mirza Glam Allah reported that the Prophet, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, said, a believer is not a defamer, nor a cursor, nor coarse, nor obscene. So and you're Mirza violating Glam that Hadith. Okay. But what about so, Mirza Glam so, how come he gets a pass? Why don't you we do use this against Mirza Glam Ahmed? Yeah, I'm, I mean, when you, you, I'm not talking about Mirza Glam Ahmed. No, but, but okay. Mirza Glam is uh, uh, you know, How does that Ahmed. exactly? How does that exactly disprove what you do, Bashir? How does that give you a pass at using your logic? Uh, well, first off, I'm not doing anything. You're you're stuck in Oshkosh and you're frustrated. You don't have a job. You're probably popping pills. That's also a lie. I do stuff. have a job. That's well, also a lie. I do look, have a job. Look, look, you're a young guy. Look, I work at a gas station. Man. Years old. We forgive you for everything you've done wrong so far. We pray for you, brother. See, you there's that smile help. on Bashir's face. You, you, I'm telling you, you guys, that. there's that look, smile on his face. He's you lying. That. You need some medical wait, wait. attention. Damon, it, 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 Damon, it is a sunnah to smile. You know that, right? It's a sunnah you know to it's smile. You know smile, Damon? You know, liars yeah. also Look, he was smile, supposed though. To do a debate. So are you saying the prophet was supposed was to do a debate and, and, and he was told not to? Wait, are you go saying the prophet? My, go watch my YouTube response to that. It's all there. Are you saying the Prophet sallallahu was, was a liar because he used to smile as an act of charity? Are you saying that? Because I just gave you a hadith the prophet would I never, I never said that. Well, then you, well, you said, said the liar smile too. So you're trying to counter that when I said it's soon to smile. You countered that saying that. It's a psychological yes, effect. We don't even know what you're talking about, man. Well, I do actually <laughs> know what you're talking about. You just refuted a claim. I brought a hadith and the prophet would smile, as soon as to smile, and you said, well, liars smile too. So why are you refuting what I just remember? You should say, yeah, it is a sunnah. Why, why would you deny yeah, that? It's a sunnah, but there's also context. Because Bashir Shah, it's a psychological fact that liars, so, so, those okay, who no. have to lie, often smile. Okay, so where in Islam does it say that you're able to judge his heart right now because he smiled? Can you show me anywhere where it shows you that where you can do that? I'm just telling a fact. How do you know it's a fact though? Did you open how, his heart? How should I, why should I explain myself when this is a fact? This is a tendency I see in Bashir Shah. Because the Quran says, Kul hatu burhanukum in kuntum sadiqin. If you are truthful, bring your evidence. If you claim it's a fact, how do you know that he is a munafiq or he's an atheist? Just, just look at Bashir's conduct. That's all I'm going to tell you guys. I'm seeing what, him. What he does. He, he pathologically lies about people. If 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 that's not enough proof, then you can go observe him for yourself. Try to get to know Bashir Shah. I, I am trying to hear, but you, you joined in the stream. I mean, I'm getting to know him the second episode with him. <laughs> I mean, but I'm saying you 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 came into the stream with guns blazing, and I'm trying to have a conversation, and you you're just saying, "What's up? What's up?" Like you're gonna do something, like you're gonna fight him or something. I mean, we're having a conversation. Is this the I'm just asking Bashir to recite Quran for us. Okay, but is that the first thing you do when you come into a live stream? Not even salam alaikum, nothing. Hello, how are you doing? Thank you for giving me the stream. Okay, nothing. but why should I offer salam to someone who abuses 
the prophets. So like I don't, I don't know. And, and I don't those know. who abuse me. Why should I, I why should I give him a salam of those who are oh, biased? I never abuse you, and I don't abuse the Prophet I'm I love talking so about the shir. Yes, but I'm here too, right? Because he okay. he has an account on Twitter called Ahmadis Exposed, and it's Bashir himself. Bashir, is I, it you? But I'm but I'm talking is it about you, Bashir. Is Ahmadis Exposed you? I'm talking about come on, me. Come on, man. You, say it. Say it. Come on. You seem so triggered right now. I'm just saying, for me, I'm here. <laughs> and you won't even offer salam, nothing. Hey, how you doing, Muzzy Buzz? First time on your show. Thank you. You put the I link here. Now. <laughs> yeah, this is the way a Muslim greets? Yeah, see, see, Bashir, you're embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, I'll be embarrassed. You, also, you also lied about me saying that I'm an Islamophobe. That's not true at all. I am a well, devoted Ahmadi Muslim. I offer the five daily prayers. I recite Quran. I do a lot of dawah. Wait, did you, did you try to, wait, did you try to uh, plan to like hurt any Muslims while you were in Oshkosh or somewhere in Wisconsin? I heard someone posting stuff about you. Yeah, that that account Abadi's exposed, it's Bashir Shah. Just look at the grammar and compare it with his main account, Bashir Ahmed Shah on Twitter. That's not, that's not evidence. Guy. That's not he's, evidence. He's embarrassed right now, and it's true. No, but that's not why evidence. Why are you mad, Damon? Damon, why are you so mad, dude? Let me show you how this is. You know, Razi Noman is, is, is typing the same things you're saying, so you must be the same person because he's saying recite Quran and you're saying the same thing, so you must be the same person. So you're exposed now. That's the kind I'm of logic to Razi Noman right now on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, you could be typing with two different devices. How do I know? I mean, you're typing the same thing and talking the same way. Look I mean, at I the differences between his grammar and my grammar. Yeah, I can't tell you. Speaking, he's typing. So, I mean, I could say you're the same people. Do you see where this logic goes? Like, it's not very logical to say that because you think they have the same type of grammar. They talk the same way. It's not him. Why don't you just ask him, hey, are you that person? Let him answer. Just, just, look, at, just, look, at, just look at the two accounts and compare. But why not just ask him? Yeah, funny? You know, Bashir Shah is very well known among the internet of us Ahmadis. Yeah, so and, know, and, and they, they all hate me. The only reason why, the only reason why you're saying I don't have proof is because you don't know who he is. Well, I'm saying <laughs> instead of you making accusations, I'm asking you, why don't you ask him right now in front of him if that account belongs to him or not and see what his response is. It is him. So How do you know? Did you I, ask Because I'm talking because I was DMing with him. I'm saying ask him right now. He's in front of you. You can, you can ask me, Damon. You can, he can say okay. the proof on the screen. I'm saying you can ask him the question. Come on if he ever wants to. So I, I don't. I don't know why you want. You wanted to ask the man a question. I mean, hey, let me ask you. But she, I'll do it for you. Okay, because I'll be the man. Is that account? I don't know what that is. Is that is that your account? Not at all. No, man. it's not I my account. Manic. I have one Twitter account, Bashir at uh, A Shaw. It's the only one I have. Ahmadi's no exposed is Bashir Shah. Ahmadi's exposed is Bashir Shah. Same yeah. grammar. Look, Bashir Shah off the new feet. From so people who comments with him. So that's Ahmadi. You, you so. need help. I, I don't understand why, why, why you're talking over him. I'm asking him a question that you couldn't answer, ask him. And now he's answering. And instead of him being able to respond, you're talking over him. He's lying. No, but that shows to me that you are lying. Because you won't let the man respond for himself. I'm telling the truth. I don't know you're telling the truth. I'm asking a question. You can't give me evidence. My only goal, my only goal is to give the truth and let people decide. Yeah, but truth requires evidence, as the Quran mentions. The evidence is all there. Go look at it. No, I'm saying, what is the evidence that that account belongs to him? Or what is the evidence that he drinks alcohol today? I just gave the proofs. No, you didn't. You just, that's not evidence. There are plenty of people that yes, type of make it is evidence. The only reason why you say that is so you look good to your audience. Well, I don't need to look good in front of you. You're an Ahmadi to me, bro. I, I, you, your crowd means nothing to me. I to like, your like, audience who don't know who Bashir Shah is. Yeah, but my audience will trust me over you every day. I'm just saying, like, they don't, they don't need to worry about they you. Follow you and don't know, don't know about Ahmadiyya. I'm saying they can go research what they want to do. I'm saying we are, we're learning about Ahmadiyya right now. I mean, just by the whole accusation, we're learning what we need to know about it. The, uh, the aggressive yeah, this, behavior. Uh, this, this is what I encourage the audience to do. Go David, read, go is, read is the book of the Prophet Islam for yourselves and determine truth from falsehood. 
you know, whether okay. I'm being critical or whether you're being critical. How about this? How about this? How about we talk about some of the core elements of Ahmadiyya right now? And we get between you and Bashir, since you guys were both, I have experience to it. And I, I'm I'm decently knowledgeable in religion, so I can very comment from the Sunni side. And let's have a discussion about rather than saying, hey, you're that person or you're a drunk or, or you're the, I mean, I would, I mean, why do all that? Why don't we just talk about the issue at hand? Are you willing to do that, Damon, or do you need to get permission for that? No, I'm not willing to do that at all. <laughs> have only no, he's got to get permission. Look, he's got to go out. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I, 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 I can I talk about anything uh, else? <laughs> I'm not trying to be condescending. I mean, I know that that's a, a thing. I'm trying to respect your religion. You, apparently, you need to have permission. So I'm wondering if you have it or not. Because if you don't, I don't want to put you in a, you know, get you kicked I only, out. Of I only, only talk about what I know. Of. That's it. That's not so, every allegation okay. I am informed of. So you don't know Ahmed. Can, can, you, can, you, can you recite Quran? What does that have to do with anything? Bashir. Bashir, please recite Quran. I'll recite Quran. Okay, but what does that have to do with anything? You know the. Let me let, let me give you an opinion to recite Quran. What does that? Why? I mean, why, why don't you just want to? I mean, Abu Tawafika during his interview okay, so with Zaytun okay. FM. But I'm, but I'm saying, what what does that have to do with anything? Because Bashir is a liar. Oh. He thinks he over exaggerates what he does. He thinks he thinks he <laughs> said he recites Arabic and Urdu. No, he doesn't. So well, okay, that's not right he said he Arabic and he Urdu. Agrees, man. He, said he said he can. He said he just. I just asked him, "Why are you lying, sir?" I I, I asked him right now, "Do you read Urdu?" He said maybe at a tenth grade level. He admitted that his yeah, Urdu was, I was there. I was there during the stream. I I watched it and Bashir. Yeah. So how is that a lie? He can't even read Urdu. Uh, wait, now, if now we read Quran, please. Read level. When did he one, say he one verse? One verse from the Quran, Bashir. That's all I'm asking. One verse. He did it on my other stream. One verse. But he did it on my other stream. He said, "Inna atayna kal kausar." He said, "I did." He did it. I mean, recite, I, recite Quran, Bashir. Do it. He just Thing, how, okay, just recite the ayah you did in the, in the Atay al Kalikal. You said it last time, right? So just oh, do it again. Oh, oh I mean, you know what? I'm I'm gonna give you a few, uh, uh, Damon, just to disprove you and show how. Uh, Pull a crown like, and when prove it. Read, read the Arabic on, on. script on it. Share, you share believe, your. Look, look, you don't believe in love for all, hatred for none. It's all a lie. You're an Islamophobe, and I'll do it for you anyways. I was a bit That's a lie. I am not an Islamophobe. And as okay. a matter of fact, okay, don't sure you be I'm, I'm, about to, I'm about to say what, what you're begging for me to say. So keep it down for a little bit. So look, I was a bit I was a This is chapter 108, verse 1. Mirza Glam Ahmed used this verse to claim that he's the second coming of Muhammad. Now, can you pull a Quran for us? Okay, wait. Now, now hold on. I'll give you another one. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Alif Lamim, Zalik Al Kitabu, La Reba Fi. I just gave you like three. So stop. Go back to the drawing board. Now take now take out, a Quran, take out a Quran and recite the Arabic script. Okay, so now I, 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 <laughs> so look, so I give it to him and he's like, no, now I have something else. You can you can screen share as well. I'm okay with that. Wait, hold on. I, I, okay, I want to do a little screen share or something, okay? Since we want to do this, let's do a screen share or something, okay? I, I, want, I want to do a screen share of this. Since we're talking about Quran recitation, let's just do this here, okay? Let's take a look at this. By the way, that's an edited video. Okay, so you want to give me, hold on. You want to give me a different video of him reciting Quran? I'll, I'll let you choose. I don't Which have one? it with me right now, but I, I can tweet it on Twitter. Okay, hold on. L let me let me just uh, hey, watch this. Masur Qadiani. I I'll go back. And I'll say. Uh, <laughs> let me just put in Masur Qadiani. Uh, that by the way, that came up when I put him uh, Ahmadi Khalifa reciting Quran. That now, came up. Now Bashir, can you Bashir? Can you recite Qadiyani. Quran for us? I, I already did. <laughs> now take out take out a screen now, and share it. Now he wants take more. out a so screen look, and share so it. Look, once we disprove them. Look, once we prove that we, we can all read the Quran, we all know Arabic, once we, we, we prove that, uh, all the, then they go to something else. Okay. Bashir, now, I'm going to recite from Quran. 
off can, the air can you, if you haven't minute? done any of that yet. Can, can you pause for a minute? Let me let me just play your Khalifa in Hadrat Mirza Masur. No, it, it is important because if you're criticizing him for not being able to recite Quran, we want to make sure that your your head honcho yeah, can recite. Because he, he doesn't want to pull an Arabic script because he can't read it. Well, forget about. I'm saying, why, why can't your? Don't you think it's more important that your head honcho can't pronounce basic Arabic and he's the scholar of of your movement? Well, guess that, what? You're, you're telling a lie. I've actually met okay, him, I'm, and he, wait, he okay, recites so Quran just fine. Okay, let, let, let me... I've prayed with him, he recites Quran just fine. Okay. You both well, are lying. Let's play together. I'm here. This is your web. No, this is your let's, let's talk about Bashir Shah first. No, no wait. Actually, if you don't let me I, let play, I'm going to have to put you on mute first. Let, because I don't let, want you to talk over me. Okay? So here. Okay. Now, you see, like, first of all, hold on. Let me just pause it for a second. There's basic things here. Oh, did he did he leave? Oh, I think he took off. Yeah, he probably he paused, yeah. man. And, and so 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 I gave him no. some some Quran. Look, I I memorized the last fifteen chapters of the Quran when I was twelve. I memorized the first thirty verses of chapter two when I was twelve. So these guys need to yeah, stop. You know what? Give, give me, you know what? Hold on, brother. Give me one second. I want to play this because I want because I I, I want to know what they're comparing to because if he's making you recite Quran, I want to know. I mean, it's more important that their head imam recites this. Okay, here. Right. First of all, just as you know, the off the off the bat, it's not Bismillah Rahman Rahim. It's Bismillah Rahman Rahman. Rahim. These are the words. Not saying the ha is. I mean, this is basic. I'm not saying every single Arabic or person who's perfect in Arabic. But when you are the leader of an Ahmadi or of a movement, a, a khalif, yani the imam, al imam, where you lead prayer, you are the in charge of the people. You should be able to recite basic Quran. Basic. I mean, basic. And this is the leader. He's trying to now embarrass Brother Bashir because he can't recite Quran. If I would wanted to be a total a hole, I could have made him recite Quran, and I could have recited after him and embarrassed him. But I didn't want to do that. Right. I want to show right. him. I kept asking him, "What is the significance of this? What is the right. significance?" Well, of this? well I'm, right. I'm and that, you, uh, uh, um, um, there's another family member of, of mine, and that's what he went and told everyone. He said, "Don't believe anything." Bashir has to say he doesn't know the Quran. He spread this this thing that's not even true. And now this is what and look, he does Damon does live streams with this same family member all the time. And they talk about me all the time. And they say, I don't know a single verse of the Quran. That's ridiculous. But and then they they say that their Halifa's uh the is perfect. So Okay, so let's continue and find out. Alhamdulillah. First of all, the, that Alhamdulillah, you don't, you don't, the ah is not, there's no, you don't continue, make it long, extend it. Right? It's Alhamdulillah. <laughs> yeah, it's not Alhamdulillah. You, you don't, that's not how you recite this. This is not the way that it is. But, anyways. Okay, alam and alam are two different words. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, rabbil alami. Now, within the first verse, I'm saying the man could not recite. Now, I'm not mocking Quran. I'm I'm correcting his recitation. If this is not Quran, when you recite um, the 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 pronunciation, no, it's not that. Damon Steele, don't you? You're welcome to come back on, Spangle. Bilal radiallahu anhu could not pronounce certain words. There is no attempt at him to recite these words. Do not conflate that hadith. Bilal right. radiallahu anhu right. attempted to fix his correction, but his tongue—he was unable to do so. There, it, it is possible for him to say alhamdu or alayhim, right? It's possible, but they don't say it, right? And because they don't choose to learn this. And so when you don't learn the basics, and it's not even about pronunciation, it's even about a tajweed. When you say Alhamdulillah Rabb al Alameen, you don't extend the, uh, the ending of the ha. You, you don't say Alhamdulillah Rabb al Alameen. You don't say this. La, when, when you say this, it makes actually it's negation. 
Why would he be doing that? This is not about the ability to pronounce a word. It's about the rules of reciting. Reciting, And when you have someone who is an imam and he can't recite basic words, Damon, and now you want to come and make fun of Bashir, whether he can or can't recite Quran, is, is, is not relevant, dude. I gave you an opportunity to come and talk about the issues we're talking about, about, um, for example, uh, the, the killing and murder of... Um, What's the name? Fakhruddin, about the harassment that happened there, about the issues of halal food, about the cult like mentality, about, you know, funneling money to England, things like this that we talk about, right? Rather than talk about that, you want him to recite Quran. Let's say, for, you know, for argument's sake, um, um, Damon, since you're in the chat right now, you're active. Let's say, for, let's say he's not a Muslim. Let's say Brother Bashir is an atheist, waliyaudu billah, and he's a mulhid, he's a murtad from Islam, waliyaudu billah. We ask Allah to protect him from that. How does that change the information he's providing? If I would say, hey, right. give me... And, right. and, they his, nothing to say. and they got nothing to say. I can go to his blog, and I can go ahead and look at the information. For example, actually, as a matter of fact, let us go to your blog and let, let's talk about something here that we um, had openly, right? And actually, I had it on, um, wait, what's your uh, uh, Ahmadi blog? Ahmadi Exposed, right? I was, I was just there. Ahmadi, uh, yeah, there you go, yeah. So watch, I'm going to say, Damon's there all the time. <laughs> Yeah, so like, like what? If I wanted to do, um, well, I wanted to search for Fakhr al-Din, right? So I, I can just put like, I'll, I'll just put this here. Oh, by the way, this is the, this is where I got the picture from, by the way. You see, when you say, oh, he's drinking alcohol, look, he, the man documents the proof. He gives a, a, a evidence for the the, the Cambridge. Uh, he gives the sources in the bottom. And this is like academic, right? Abdul Salam's bio. He gives the fact that he has um, Mujahid Kamran. He has... Um, uh, other bio biographies of him. I mean, it goes on and on. I'm saying that again. The if the, he's providing evidence. Now it's up to me to go and further research. So likewise, if you have a counter argument, why don't you come and present where they are? I can find them and and give a rebuttal rather than saying, "Hey, recite Quran." Like, what is that going to prove to any of us? It's not going to disprove him. You, you, I mean, even if he's right. a, a, a liar or whatever, it doesn't mean that what he's saying is false. That's not how the argument is won. You don't, this is called a, a fallacy to ad hominem, right? When you try to assassinate the character of somebody rather than the argument of somebody, right? And that's a problem. Hold on, we have a super chat and we need to take preference to this one. Oz, salam alaikum, my friend. Good to see you, my friend. All this from like Australia. Uh, yeah, can you talk about Aga Khan's influence in Pakistan around the world compared to Ahmadis? What are the key differences? To be honest, um, I don't know too much about Aga Khanis, but I know that they have they are very influential in terms of like the money and wealth they have in Pakistan as far, and they were very close to the British government as well too. As a matter of fact, one of the most important medical colleges in Pakistan is Aga Khan Medical College, which is I mean, even has very good relations with the Mayo Clinic and even American institutions where you, you go to those universities, they actually get uh, accredited. But um, maybe we'll have Brother Bashir talk about that at the end, if you know anything. I don't know. Right now, I just kind of want to get into uh, what we were talking about right now with uh, our two Ahmadi uh, Patreons or, member, uh, you know, or members here in, 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 the, in the chat box. So we'll get back to that. Make sure I will definitely highlight that up later on at the end of the stream uh, for sure. Okay? Jazakallah khair for the yeah. super chat. Yeah. So look, the, the, the attitudes and, and, and behaviors of Razi Kudrat, Damon Stengel, Tariq Jodhari, a family member of mine, proves to me that there's no persecution. There are some innocent amities who, who are being treated unfairly, who are being forced to bear the brunt of what these guys are doing. Um, they are not honest. They are not nice. They, they. I mean, look at what, what, what my dad did to me. He tied me up, put me in the backseat of a car because I questioned his halafa. Um, you see what I'm saying? So so it's like, uh, you it's know. I can't imagine being remember. a father. I can't imagine that. Tying up your own son. Yeah, like who who does that? So so this is how I knew, brother. That's, this is why I say when I was 11, 12 years old, I'm from the street. I know the angles. I was like, these people are not who they say they are. Love for all, hatred for none? No. It was like, there's no way they do not believe in that. So that was invented I mean, in Damon 1980. Told me. He said, no, Damon himself told me on Twitter, no love for you and no respect for you. He told me very clearly. Like, no right. love. And, I mean, you told me very clearly, Damon. He's not even, like, denying. You told me, I mean, I asked you, what in response? You told me no love for me. 
Right, Damon? Yeah, so yeah. are you contradicting the Ahmadi belief here? I guess yeah, the real he, side of Of course he's contradicting it. So so love for all, hatred for none was started in 1980 by the third Khalifa when he was in Spain and they, they needed a vision statement or a marketing statement. That's all that really is. So um, my problem was I believed it when I was 10 years old. But then as I looked for it, I didn't see it. So I knew something was up and they they persecuted me for questioning that. So as you see, they're still doing it. You know, uh, they're, they're not going to end. First it's the, but, but then when we ask them about Dr. Abdul Salam, hey, and check this out, Mirza Glam Ahmed used to drink wine. He didn't, wasn't just on opium. The wine, the port wine, he used to order wine from a famous plumber's shop in Lahore and they used to deliver it. The second Khalifa, he had a dance, Dancing girl from, from an Italian dancing girl come from Lahore. She worked at the Cecil Hotel and come to Kadian. See what I mean? So, yeah, hold on. We got we got some brothers that want to bring them on uh, onto the stream here. So let me go ahead and bring them on. Um, oh, you know what? Let me see here. Okay, sorry. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Well, so I, I gotta say this one thing. So about uh, the allegation that Bashir is like an atheist. So Bashir has been like, I've been like messaging him like about some stuff or like just different questions. And if Bashir was an atheist, believe me, he would not be giving me responses with a hadith and different stuff, clarifying different uh, like doubts or answers or just different things. This is not the nature of an atheist. So this that's like completely against what I've been like yeah. noticing noticing when I messaged him. So it's just like exactly. a complete lie, a false and, allegation, and just you know, like and, it's, it's a fraud and a joke. Yeah. And the issue is with these Qadianis who are now in the chat. They just target him. Uh, you know, I know uh, Bashir for a while now. I have saw some of his tweets. And, you know, these uh, people like Razi, Damon, you know, they all come and uh, <laughs> try to defame him. But it's funny because this Damon dude, he literally, I think three months ago, around April, right? We set up a date like for, for you know, for an actual debate. But uh, the coward, you know, blocked me and ran away. Like I saw, you know, one of his videos, like it was something about Ibn Kathir, right? He made an assumption that Ibn Kathir was false. So, you know, I really wanted, uh, you know, to uh, debate him uh, regarding that. But, you know, he's a coward. And, uh, yeah, you should just uh, <laughs> ignore this uh, this guy. Yeah, but, I uh, mean, I mean, this is why uh, I wanted to ask him if he has permission to speak because I didn't want him to get involved in the heat of it. And then all of a sudden he says, oh, the Khalifa said I can't talk. And then he just signs off. Right. So I want to make sure that um, that that, you know, he could talk. You know what I mean? Before we got in this conversation, apparently I think he learned and I think he just signed off from the chat once we, mm -hmm. we you know, the but yeah. here's the thing, regardless of this. As Muslims, and by the way, what we demonstrated here right now is this is called Adillah, meaning we have two witnesses who came in aside from me, who testified that he's a Muslim. They said that, look, yeah. you know what? It wasn't a, he didn't say, oh, look at his grammar. You know, he has a fake account. I mean, we look at the grammar and compare it. This is not Dalil in Islam. In, in Islam, the, you know, um, many people don't know this, but when it comes to the court of law and when you're asked to provide evidence, it has to be bona fide evidence. You have to either bring witnesses or something. You can't bring suspicion. Suspicion of your brother in Islam is haram. Even spying on him is haram. If you have no proof of it, yeah. And yeah. so, in, and, and uh, b besides, even if any of that is true, that that's his account or he retweeted an atheist, none of that matters at the end of the day because we're talking about the content. It's mm -hmm. irrelevant about his personality. And this is something yeah, exactly. that... Raz, and by the way, real quickly, I just want to address something very quickly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, listen, um, I think we have someone in here is saying this here. I will send me money. Listen, Habibi, Razi. No, that's I don't that's, uh, that's, that's uh, what's his name? The guy from Ahmadi Answers, like uh, the okay. weird guy. So, so Razi, how about <laughs> if you want to... Yeah, wait, just listen, join, I, Razi. Why are you afraid, man? Just yeah, join. I mean, the chat is... Yeah, it's in the link is there for free to join. But just to be clear, I don't need your money. People who donate, they donate because they appreciate the work that I do. I don't want to force anybody to give me any money. Alhamdulillah, yeah, okay. I mean, you're able to have two different studios, the Mad Bum Luke's apart, without a people from giving us any money. And this is all for my own self. So I don't need your money. Yeah. And by the way, I don't think your your Khalifa would approve of you giving me money anyways. You have to funnel that back to England. So I don't need to put yourself in Okay? Anyways. That's a good um, one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. By, by the way, uh, brother, brother, can you go to his channel, Damon's uh, channel, 
like you know as a youtube channel right okay just let me show what i don't yeah, know what show, YouTube channel is, to be honest damon stango or something okay damon i will let me just pull this up and go ahead uh, why don't you yeah. tell me tell us I, why. I, I, want, uh, I want you to uh show what he said about even kathir it's really uh not good to be honest you know okay we'll go ahead and uh, pull this up let me um yeah um, and uh, um in the meantime so so one of my main sources of of arabic information is ibn kathir i'm not even using my own personal opinion and and these guys think i'm using I'm not defining Mutawafika. Ibn Kathir is. I'm just telling everyone what he said. You see what I mean? And then um, I can go back and reconstruct the Arabic wording and then show, you know, this is how Ibn Kathir was explaining that, that Isa hasn't died yet. So You have to look for uh, um, something about Ibn Kathir. Like, uh, Sheikh al-Islam, Ibn Kathir versus yeah. the gas station Sheikh. I think that's the one. Like a response to Ibn Kathir. Yeah, that, that's the one. Like uh, to the left, one here. Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, 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 look. What he says, man. It's so, it's so weird for him to say that. Even Kathir is one of the great scholars of Islam. So, uh, yeah, had that this guy thinks he can. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and play this right now. Cited by Ibn Kathir, and in and in this case, he is quoting from Al Tabari. These ahadith are proven to be weak. For example. Where it states this honorable Aya was called the Aya of the Sword, about which Al Dariq bin Muzahim said it abrogated every agreement of peace between the Prophet Islam, and any idolatry in every treaty in every term. But yet, if we look at the beginning, Where it says the same person this he is included in the incomplete chain of narrations and the same thing is with Atiya al-Afi reported that Ibn Abba said <laughs> and we see this <laughs> in the area of the supposed abrogation of all That's so crazy, man. Here it is. Alafi said that Ibn Abbas commented, "No idolatry." Like, it's funny for him to say this because even in incomplete narrations, people can be still sahih. So I don't think what you know what this guy's. I don't think he knows what he's saying. To be honest, you know. Yeah, I mean, first of all, um, number one, uh, you can't just open the front of a book and then all of a sudden know Ilm al rijal There are exactly. hadith sciences, and there are people who can have character flaws that will also be, they transmit a hadith from them, like Ibn Munabbih, like we, we have these uh, hadith in the Sahih al-Bukhari, and we have um, uh, different chains of narration. Just because there are missing chains does not mean it cannot correlate with the different a hadith in, uh, or different a hadith in the book. So this notion that you're basically trying to play Ilm al rijal you know, in trying to become a, become a scholar of Rijal right from the beginning of a book, which is not so, in a, in a, in a matter of your expertise. Um, I don't know why you would even do that. Um, this is very, very strange. Um, but anyways, um, should I continue the video? Oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. I don't know if you want to have any other commentary on it. That's why. Yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead. In addition to how peace treaties conducted for Badawa was revealed in Nelson had ended. So according to this introduction... The chain, so according to this introduction, the chain that's uh, Adila Ar Afi reported that Ibn Amr said it, is an incomplete chain of narration. And as the introduction, as the scholar who translated this, assuming it's from him, admits, reports that are attributed to the companions of Allah's Messenger وسلم, are commonly used for additional explanation of the meanings of the Quran. As for those quotes that Ibn Kathir mentions in passing, these Quran. quotes may or may not be authentically attributed to them. Whatever it is mentioned that one of them said something and that the statement contradicts other clearly authentic texts, then such statements cannot be held as evidence against what is known to be authentic additional information in this regard. Okay. It's found in the introduction of Ibn Kathir. Yeah, so basically so, he's trying to say that he's not... Uh... 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know? there's no evidence. To, yeah, I mean, yeah. the idea. That there's, I mean, look again. We don't. This is not how we determine whether a hadith is 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 true or or, or sahih or not. Not by the not because of the reciter himself. That can downgrade a hadith, but hadith can be leveled to a great. It can be raised to a level of hasan based on other hadith around it, and even the, exactly um, a weak hadith does not necessarily mean it's uh, uh, sure. not authentic. But th- this is funny because. The Qadianis themselves, they literally take hadith and reject them. Like, uh, uh, you know, the Khatim and Nabi, and the hadith which says that the Prophet Muhammad is the final messenger, which is actually sahih. But they reject it and, you know, they twist things. It's so crazy, man. Allah. It's, it's hypocrisy. Like, uh, I mean, a, a, a lot of the people, even the Quran. Yes, the Quran. I mean, this is, this is it's very clear. You know, I mean, but anyways, yeah, uh, Naz, is that you? Oh yeah, I was just. I thought I was muted. Sorry about that. No, I thought you were gonna make. I thought. Oh, okay, I thought you had a. Oh, comment. okay. No, I was okay. I was just gonna say. So what I've what I've noticed is a lot of times they quote these like fabricated and weak hadith, like the if Ibrahim's son or something like that. I think uh, Bashir knows what I'm talking about. But it's like it's like a hadith. If, it's like a whole list of a hadith they quote. But suddenly, when it's uh, a hadith that criticizes them, they become students of Jarwa Tadil. It's it's amazing. <laughs> Yeah. Um. By the way, Oz, which uh, which who wrote a response video to me and which channel and who? Uh, I'm sorry. Who? Uh, uh, Ahmadi did already. What do you mean? I think. No, I think most likely it's, it's the Ahmadiyas. I think, man. Like uh, they do uh, yeah, when I someone. Know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm curious. Anyway, we'll, we'll let Oz comment. That. Yeah. Anyway, I think this has been largely. And here's the sad part. I gave both of them an opportunity to, I mean, it's an open invitation for anyone that wants to come on. I put the link there for a reason. Um, and, 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 and they don't want to join on. Um, the reality is, is that it's, it's, it's sad because of the fact that, um, you, I offered a platform to you instead of engaging in the dialogue, instead of engaging in the discussion about the, I mean, the incident of alleged by, alleged by, um, by the Bashir, um, the, the conversation became about the, the personality of Brother Bashir and about whether he can read or whether he can't read or whether he he, he drinks alcohol or not, it makes no difference to me, right? Um, so again, it's sad to know that that's their they're called the tablir, like where they just this is the tablir of the Ahmadiyya, where like, you know you assassinate right. people, assassinate them. Like, what is going on here? I don't understand. Right. Did uh, this is what they're taught from Mr. Glam Ahmed. This is exactly what Mirza Ghulam Ahmed taught them to do. They're following the blueprint. So that's why I always say they have no right to cry the persecution. It makes n- absolutely no sense for them to say that they're, when, when they're doing it to everybody, you know, and we don't condone it, you know. And honestly, I know Ahmadis who, who go to Pakistan for vacation and spend money mm-hmm. and splurge and they don't never get persecuted, you know. Um, so, so it's real um, contradictory, and you just saw it. All this guy said, and him and, and Razi Kudrat, does he know how to how, how to read Arabic, brother? I was taught by the Amadio movement how to read Arabic. <laughs> 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 like, 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 like they're saying the Amadio movement. Yeah, like, he, yeah, here's the thing: if he can't recite Arabic or read it, it's because of the people he was following with you guys before. So we're here to. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to ask him because it's not my business. If he wants to have, uh, uh, put it this way, if you have any struggles with the Arabic language, I'll be happy to make sure that you say Arabic better than any one of these people. But the point is that I, we don't have him. He, did, he didn't acknowledge that. And it, we don't need to get, and the reason why, by the way, the reason why I'm not entertaining that, it's not because I don't know whether he knows how to recite or not. That's not my, the reason why I'm not entertaining is because it's not relevant. Right. This is what we call a diversion. This is called a red herring. When you're talking about the issue of the personality of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, about how he was involved with these kinds of sh- the charlatan activities, about his relationship with the British government, about him being a zamindar, which is like a tax collector, about things like this, about um, the, the falsehood of the movement. Right. All those things have nothing to do with whether this brother can recite Arabic or not. In order to uh, pull the attention, the spotlight off of the relevant questions and the pertinent questions, it then becomes, can you recite the Quran? 
And that has nothing to do with it because Mirza Qulam Ahmad was not quoting Quran when he said that he was doing these things, right? This had nothing to do with that. Actually, by your own by your own books, Mirza Qulam Ahmad knew nothing of Arabic until one night when he magically got 4,000 words in his head or something like that. I don't know. But he knew nothing about it anyways. It, so, it's funny. Arabic, it's funny. Yeah. I, I think it was like a, I read on their one of their websites. It was like, it was like a kind of like a mock uh, Quran challenge. Let me see. Let me uh, pull it up. I, I think I, here it is. It's like uh, a quote unquote miracle regarding his literature. The books of uh, Ahmed, uh, MGA, and their eloquence itself is a miracle. We do not find such literature in the history of mankind. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, you know, I'm sorry, but MGA reminds me of like, uh, G, you know, GTA, like Grand Theft Auto. Can we make a new acronym for that? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I don't know, like Mirza Gang, Mirza Gang Authority or something. I don't know, something we can make some good in the acronym. But anyway, the point being is that, look, I don't want to make fun of the guy because that's not the way I usually do it, right? I try to keep it a little bit more serious, but you guys kind of like push me because like when you try to block somebody, that bothers me. I hate bullying. Right, bullying. I'm I'm the guy that stood up for bullies. Like I got into fights because bullies were getting bullied, and I didn't like that. And this is bullying. Whether the man knows Quran or not is irrelevant. Right, we're talking about a figure that was out there and it's public. He openly challenged people. His challenges are apparently according to you even still standing. Right, so to 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 go after his work and his and his personality is welcomed by him because of the fact that he made these challenges. Perp uh, I mean, openly. Right? It doesn't matter whether he can read. I, how about this? I'll channel any one of you guys, Rosie or Wizzy. How about you prove it to me that you can read? And I will recite for, and I will correct your recitation. And then one of you guys come on my show and prove to me that you can read before you put it to anybody else. Because if you can't read, then let, 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 let's have that standard then. Right? Before you make him recite, how about anyone? I'll give you a random chapter from the Quran on my live stream and make you recite. And then we'll have him recite. If you can recite it correctly, then we'll have him recite. Otherwise, you have challenge. no business to talk about it. Nothing. It's a, it's, it's a non-existent challenge. It's a red herring. And that's why I don't entertain it. Because this is what we call a rudiment, a childish argument. It's, it, 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 and you, 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 what you're doing is it's an, another fallacy called appealing to authority. You're saying, oh, look at the authorities who can recite Quran. You can't recite Quran. It's irrelevant. It has nothing to do with this argument. Right, right. Well, what, what they're trying to say is that none of us know the Quran, not just me. It's hasty uh, generalization uh, too. Muhammad Hijab, you name it, Yasir God, they're like, all you Muslims don't know the Quran, that's why you don't know what, what the Wafika means, and we do. That's what they're trying to say. See yeah, I mean? so, and, and so by the extension, I would say I bring anyone, Ruzzy or Wizzy, Wizzy, Little Wizzy, um, Damon, anyone, how about you challenge me to the Quran right now? you guys and then we'll, we'll determine who knows the Quran who doesn't know the Quran yeah I mean, Damon so or or Damon tell tell Ruzzy to come through you know anybody any one of us. some social problems like Ruzzy does not do I mean you know because you know what honestly hold on sorry brother because of this bullying I'm thinking I might dedicate a, a half a once a week half an hour session just to refute Ahmadis now because I think this is a I think this is important because of, of just one video made you people stay up for two days, 48 hours straight. I know you guys haven't been sleeping because my Twitter is going up. Like literally you guys are on caffeine, whatever else you guys are on right now. You guys are wired, bro. This is like, I mean, this is straight up wired. You like, like rage typing. Like, I mean, like I even posted it earlier, bro. I went to sleep. I ate a meal. I spent time with my family. I got work done and you guys are still talking about me on Twitter. Like this is enough. It's enough. Khalas, yani. You know what I mean? Like enough. You know what I mean? Like it's, and it's, it's kind of like the, range. when uh, that one dude he insulted the the Hindu goddess, and the whole Twitter was just like. <laughs> yeah, but the, the problem is that it's the whole Twitter. It's just like three of these guys. Like they, they, they don't sleep. You know what I mean? Like it's not like uh, it's not like hundreds of thousands Damon, of people. I thought you had a job at a gas station. You're supposed to be no, working. But, on you, your you know phone. the funny thing is, of apparently, like the funny thing is that they have hundreds of millions of followers, and but none of these entities I've, I've noticed, none of them have more than like five thousand. I mean, I mean, very few, like twenty thousand, thirty thousand followers maximum, right? And like even like Constant Machine, he's running for Congress, so granted, he's getting public opinion. But like even their people, the main people, I can point like a Muslim scholar, like right, that has like millions, hundreds, I mean, like 20, 30, 40 million people, you know, I mean, following at a time. You know what I mean? Like these. People, you, it shows you if you look 
at the numbers of people following the figures, they're a minority. Like, there's no, there's no way there's like 20 million. I mean, the hundreds of thousands that are just sitting around. <laughs> That's not true, bro. bro That's not bro. true. We get. More Wait, hold on, hold on. One, one, I'm sorry. One second. No, Razi, you're a liar. You're a liar, Razi, because all you guys tout this all the time. Oh, the numbers, alhamdulillah, the numbers are growing 200,000 a year. We have 100 more thousand coming in Africa. You guys tout numbers all the time. Now, it doesn't, now it's not important? Now, what is it about, dude? Hey, hey, look, the, the Halifa, his Friday sermons get like 5,000 views. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, look I think one of my videos got more than that. Dude, pull up his last book on Juma. It's maybe he, he got it up to ten or fifteen. Like uh, during the virus, you know everyone was home during the virus. He never got more than ten thousand. He might have got fifteen. Still, look, I know rappers in my in my little city who are terrible who get fifty thousand. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm laughing because it's not hard to get 10,000 views on a video. Like, I have one video, I mean, job, and it's probably got like 7,000 videos, I mean, views on it. And I'm a very, very small channel. This guy apparently has hundreds of millions of followers, right? I mean, uh, I mean, hundreds of thousands. So, anyway, the point being is that none of these guys want to accept the challenge. It's a double standard, it's a red herring and a double standard. Again, so how about we, we um, unfortunately, they were able to kind of disrupt the stream, but I wanted to be fair and give them a chance to come in because I, I'm, I'm a person that, that believes in hearing somebody out. But instead of actually presenting an argument, we had a very aggressive young man who came up and like, what's up, what's up, what's up? Like he was going to run up and do something on me. And by the way, I, I'm from an area where people generally don't do that to me. You don't run up on somebody and say, what's up, what's up? Because those are fighting words. Those are aggressive, those are words of aggression, right? I'm going to be on my backhand. I mean, just real quickly. But the point being is I allowed that because I wanted to see if you were going to maybe, if you were excited, maybe you were going to come with an argument. But the whole time it was just, can you read, can you read, can you read? And maybe it has to do with the fact that maybe your Khalifa didn't give you permission to speak on these issues. So I suggest that you go back and write him an email, send him a, a WhatsApp message, whatever you got to do, and ask him if you can come on the show and talk about the issues. Or better yet, bring your Khalifa on the show. I will talk to him myself. Um, and we'll see if he knows Arabic. We'll see if he knows how to read the Quran. We'll challenge your Khalifa live on, 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 on the air if he wants to do that. Um, and I won't, you know, I'll make it free. won't charge him. I won't charge any of you guys. It won't cost you guys any money, and we'll happy. We'll be happy to do it. Um, so again, we provided you an opportunity. Unfortunately, you didn't meet the challenge. So we're going to move past you now because what that shows us is that you're largely irrelevant. It means to us that you're not sincere in actually talking about Ahmadiyya and what your beliefs are. You're more interested in attacking a person who's criticizing. And, you know, exactly, I mean, even when I, when I deal with critique, uh, criticizers of Islam, I even hear them out. I actually go and critique their arguments. Sure, I might throw a little pun here and there about the way they look or the way they sound, but I deal with the substance. I don't deal with the ad hominems that much. The ad hominems come later. So a word, a word of advice human advice as a brother of humanity if you want to bring anybody and convince anybody with an with an argument you have to first make an argument and how many them get you nowhere it just makes you look like you are a bunch of savage animals that are running around with no other purpose but to bully people and with that being said can we go back to talking about how the Ahmadi movement stalks and and preys on ex Ahmadis who like you know how they try to take away their money and uh, threaten their families. I, I went on your blog and I heard that there were other, actually, a Khalifa had his wife murdered. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, uh, um, absolutely. So so the second Khalifa, the same guy who had, who, who dabbled in the homosexuality, and he had seven wives when it was all said and done. He always had four when one would die. Mysteriously, he, he'd replace her and get another one, and then he'd get another one, and then he'd get another one. So his second wife mysteriously died when he came back from London in 1924. She had written a letter to a newspaper exposing him, saying, my husband, the Khalifa, it's not true who he is and what he does. All of a sudden, she's dead, and no one knows. I mean, you know, back then, the ambulance wouldn't come and, and, and figure out the cause of death, right? Right. So if the family is yeah. dead, they're dead. If that's it, so um, it's crazy, man. I mean, like, and 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 and, and I feel like they were almost they they operated like thugs very early on, 
when when they were under British India, they had full reign to act like thugs. But when you know British India collapsed, they went into like this oppressed group, like this, you know, the victimhood. Woe to me! Look at us. Everybody hates us now. But it may have been related to the fact that they, while they were, they had the upper hand, uh, they were exploiting that power they had. People naturally began to resent them. Right. That's exactly what happened. That's exactly the truth. I've looked it up. I've I've written an, an essay on persecution rates from 1889 to 1947. There was barely any Amdis who got killed or beat up. Forget killed, even slapped around. So so you were right. Damon and these other Amdis will, will walk up like they want to fight. So uh, in person, when they see me, they call the police. But on social media, they act tough. I'm telling you, I had to go to court for, for a restraining order two years ago with a family member who I saw in public, and I walked up to him and said, Aslam alaikum, tried to shake his hand. He wouldn't shake my hand. And then he got scared and started yelling for police. Next thing I know, I, uh, a, a three weeks later, I have a restraining order case, and I got to go to court and defend myself. So, so I had an uncle do that too. And I'm like, these guys don't understand that you can't, yeah, you have freedom of speech, but you can't just walk up to people and act like this. It's not right. It's even against Islam. So, so um, uh, they've been doing it for years. They're not going to stop. You know. Um, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's it's almost like you know what this reminds me of. This is what Scientologists do to ex Scientologists. Have you seen those documentaries? They stalk them. They have people with binoculars. They find out who they're talking to. Like they want to know what. I, I mean. I wouldn't be surprised if you have, you know, ex-members that are just watching, just their job is to just stalk your channel. You know, uh, we have Brother Oz, welcome brother, to I was working in a the live stream. Sorry, Brother Oz, are you here? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, uh, uh, Bashir. Oh, yeah. I was, I was just saying, I was working in an Amity company, and they spied on my computer and eliminated my entire job, eliminated that office, left me without a job. They they tried to financially boycott me. They they oh they they caused trouble. I ended up getting a divorce. Like they did everything under the sun to me, you know. And you know? And, and, and and none of it worked. And so so now they're all mad that I'm a tenured accounting professor. You know, I'm doing doing Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. You know, alhamdulillah. That's, that, that's why I always uh, believe in Allah. You know. Um, um, because I know my, my entire journey, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Allah. So, uh, 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 if they, they don't believe I'm a Muslim, well, t take that and then keep believing whatever you want to believe. So we got brother Oz here. Welcome to the stream. I think brother Oz has a question for, uh, for us or for the panel. So let's go ahead and bring in brother Oz. Assalamu alaikum brother Oz. Walaikum Aslam. Uh, good to hear from you brothers and, and sorry about the Ahmadis in the chat. I've just been watching it all go down and, uh, they seem a bit, uh, on edge. So. Okay, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. We, uh, we just, you know, yeah, but go ahead. I, like I myself am, yeah, I'm Sunni Muslim, but I wanted to um, understand from Brother Bashir because he's been in the Ahmadi community and he's seen how it works. In Australia, I've, I have noticed though the Ahmadiyya community is quite vocal um, in terms of tackling Islamophobia and these sort of things. And Obviously, we have been talking about um, division at the moment and these sort of things, but is there space for us to work together on these aspects? Because when an Islamophobe sees an Ahmadi, I'm sure they're not saying he's an Ahmadi, he's a Sunni, he's a Shia, Sufi. So is there any common ground for us um, besides the debates and those sort of things? That, that was just my question. Thank you. Yeah, if, if I could jump in there. So an Ahmadi is going to introduce themselves as we're not like all the other Muslims. They're all terrorists. They're all this. They're all that. They will straight up come out and say that. In, in America, CARE, all the Islamic organizations in America have never worked with any Ahmadi organization. Not in the UK, the in Canada, Germany. They avoid us like the plague. Um, um, the brother was saying uh, after 9-11, they, they even helped or advised the U.S. government, right? 
Yeah, I mean, even no, this is prior to 9-11, actually, we have good, on good information that the Ahmadi move, the, their leadership used to regularly meet and give congressional hearings about like Sunni mosques, and they, they're, the, they're the ones who actually used to tell them that there's extremism within them, and say that, that 90% of the, the messages are like Wahhabis, and like this, and they're like that, and so a lot of the attention came into the message, and not only that, we have caught, uh, through CVE programs, we've caught Ahmadis coming into our messages distributing jihadi literature. Um, and we actually had them removed from the community um, because of that fact. Like they were not, they didn't belong to us. We actually came known to us later on who they were. But um, but I think to to a larger degree, let's say let's move away from. I, I, I want to address Brother Oz's question because I think it's kind of important. I think at a human level, regardless of religion, we differ. We differ, but. The persecution of anyone who on the, on, on, on the basis of their religion or whatever their, you know, the racism or gender, we don't agree with that. As humans, we can say, yeah, we agree that nobody should be persecuted or, or labeled as something because of, of, of simply because of what they, what they look like and, and their belief, especially in a, in a civil society. So if an Ahmadi wants to say, hey, look, we're against Islamophobia. By all means, I mean, I don't mind. You can go ahead and join hands with that. I mean, we have Jews that say that. And we have um, Christians that say that. We have atheists that come out and say that they are also against Islamophobia or any kind of Islamophobia, right? And so, therefore, um, I wouldn't necessarily have a problem with that, but that doesn't change the fundamental part. The, the problem, I think, is if the leadership of, a, of the Ahmadiyya movement is encouraging its followers to cooperate with different CVE programs in order to entrap Muslims, then I think that needs to be something that needs to be examined a little bit more before we can actually understand if it's wise to work with them or not, right? Um, but sure, um, if they're doing work that, that is um, in Australia, if it may be different over their eyes, then I necessarily don't have a problem with that. Um, I don't know how anyone else feels, but um, I think that, that, that is a separate issue from the theological differences that we have. You know? Um, right. And yeah, let me add, yeah, yeah. so uh, um, um, the Amadis have, a, uh, uh, have another front organization called Humanity First that they're using for converts. They'll, they'll send Humanity First into Pakistan to try to help people and 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 once the people, the people find out these are amnesties they're like we don't want your help like why are you guys here trying to build a well and, and then a month later you want to build a mosque you know this is like why you know uh, uh pakistani people are not cool with that they they don't like to be hoodwinked like you're you're coming in and giving me something for free but on the back end you're trying to get something else out of it so these are the games that they play even in africa even in australia they, they got the blood drives in America, and they only do those to get sympathy. So Muslims, we do them out the bottom of our heart. We, we don't even want anything for it. Um, you know, I think in the Quran it says the best sadqa is the sadqa given silently that no one knows about, right? Um, so, yeah, that uh, uh, that's my two cents on it. Okay, yeah, um, great, great. Uh, one second, let me just, I'm getting um, the chat. So apparently people want to offer me money to, for you to recite. Now, again, listen, um, uh, we don't, we don't, again, listen, money is not what we're chasing here. This is something that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed wanted from the British government. <laughs> we don't chase for money here. Do you see what I'm saying? This, uh, if, if it was relevant to our discussion about what we're talking about, I would pay you a thousand dollars for him to recite. Alhamdulillah, Allah has given us money. We don't need that. But that's not what we need from this. What we're talking about is the benefit at hand. I, I don't need your money. I want money from a halal source, not from a source that has taken from this position. You understand? Knowing I can't take money from you anyways. I wouldn't want to take your money knowingly because, I mean, if you just wanted it without me saying, I'm telling you, don't donate to me. Right. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, by the way, and I don't even think that you're don't let the Khilafa, the Khalifa find out that you're donating to me because he might pull your Ahmadi card. You know, what I mean, I, I, I mean, by the way, would that come from you or would it come from the central like the account? Like, would it come from the bank out of England or would it come from you guys? I'm just curious because I thought you guys got to like got to have permission. I don't know. But anyways, that's a different question. So let's just, I just wanted to answer that real quick. I know you're trying to laugh a little bit. I, I look, I'm a little, when people act stupid, I get a little comical with them. That's how we do it, right? When people start to be dumb, you treat them like they're dumb people. That's just how it is. I, I'm, I'm the kind of Muslim, I, I mind, I don't mind being respectful, but when you start 
you know, crossing the line, trying to feel like you're the big man, you know, then, I, you know, you have to exchange words that are, that they understand the language, speak the language they understand. If they don't understand peace, you know, like Brother Malcolm said, you speak to them in the, in the language they understand. Right, right, right. And, and, and I'll give you an example. There's this famous Amity from the L.A. area. He's like a hard lawyer. His, his, his name is Amjad Khan. Uh, oh, you ever heard of Amjad Khan? No, I haven't heard of Amjad Khan, no. Yeah, he's their big lawyer. For whatever they're in trouble okay. for, they're sending him in to get him out of it. He got like 100 Amity refugees out of Thailand. Uh, and, oh, he's, he's the guy. Um, he tried to play uh, uh, street football with us. And, he, and him and his team lost, he couldn't take the L. So he wanted to play, and he wanted to bump off the line. And we told him, brother, you don't want that. You don't want to play rough. I play 80s basketball. You don't want to go there, brother. He said he wanted it. So he had, we somebody, I don't know who, ended up busting his two front teeth out, and he had to leave in an ambulance. So, so it's like, all we can do is keep telling you guys, stop, you know, like I told Damon, I'll, I'll pray for you, brother. You need help. You need medical assistance. You need to go see a psycho a, a therapist. They can help you. We're looking to get them help. My family member who's on here, he's the same way. Um, he used to be, get this. He used to be a 49er fan and he quit and now he's a Raider fan. <laughs> you know, out of spite. Aren't, the, aren't the Raiders moving to Aren't they moving to Las Vegas? <laughs> yeah, they moved to Vegas. And look, in the Bay, 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 that's a big thing. 49ers. Yeah, yeah, because San Fran, I mean, that's the Niners, right? Yeah, I mean, that's the team. And yeah. we are at each other's neck. I got friends I can't even hang out with or go watch a game <laughs> with. It's no good. Like, it just can't happen. This guy switched. Yeah, it's like, it's like the Bears and the Packers. Like, it's like this rivalry that you like you have, right? I get it. Right, right, yeah. all right. So, so, so they're real. You know, I see them all as weasels, you know what I mean? And I used to play basketball with them and, and football with them. And I'd be like, y'all are a bunch of weasels. Like, I, I don't even understand <laughs> the way you talk smack to each other. And we're like, and, you know, and then I, I figured out Amadea teaches these behaviors in their brainwashing sessions. See what I'm saying? That's, so, uh, that's, that's another interesting thing, too. That's another interesting thing, too. I think they also aspire to put people um, on pedestals like who are maybe um, academically inclined or uh, they could be in pol politics or they could even be actors. For example, I forgot the name of that black guy, but he was apparently an Ahmadi Muslim. He won a Grammy or something. He won some award. Some actor guy. I forgot his but name. Ali, but he I've met him so, like a bunch of times. Get this. He only joined Amadea because he fell in love with a girl who was an Amadea. Oh wow! But but here's the thing: even like they praise him, but thing is, he played a sodomite in a movie, and like they praise him for that. Like I don't get that. Why would you praise him for being a sodomite in a movie? Like, <laughs> oh, oh I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why: because he's paying thirty thousand a month to London, so Ooh, they're like, you, you can price, do bro. anything you want. Thirty stacks a month. 30 stacks. Well, he was given 10 to 15 stacks before he blew up. This is 06. Bro, maybe I should become Amity and move to up the rank. They pay me. Do little guys get the money? I mean, can I be? What if I'm like a local deputy? Like, do I get no. some of that money Hey, back? look, look. The Mirza family is so stingy about theirs, they ain't giving it to nobody. <laughs> oh, it only goes to them. Like, let's say you're a deputy in, like, the area. You don't even get that? Like, the imam of the area doesn't even get the money? Bro, they're, they're suffocating their own imams. Their own imams barely have enough money. They barely have enough food. They keep them in check. They don't let their imams go to college. So it's like, where are you going to go? If you quit, you will never get a job. Where could you ever go? So the Mirza family is not only suffocating uh, Amadis and making them live in persecution. Um, they're suffocating their own imams. And then some of the higher ranking imams... I knew this guy. His dad was an imam in the L.A. area. His name was Zial Zaki, and uh, he became an imam, and he wasn't cooperating. He was asking questions. They said, oh, you want to ask questions? We're going to send you to Africa. And, and make oh, so it's kind of there. like... So it's kind of like the uh, it's kind of like the the way the Catholic Church deals with like the priests that do that mess up. They put them out to a different coven or something like that. They put them out somewhere else where it's a different part of the world where they have to just it's a punishment. They're banishing them from the land. 
kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Brother Oz has yeah, another yeah. question. I think. Let yeah. Uh, hold on. Well, go ahead and continue. I'm just gonna put up Brother Oz. Brother Oz, ask you a question you want. Um, or if you can do anything you want to, whatever you feel like. I think this will be the last question because it's been two hours again. It flew by. We didn't even realize it. Um, so I'm going to give you the time while he types up or, or joins in. I know you want do you wanted to do a stream of your own. Why don't you just put in your input about whatever it is you wanted to cover on your stream and get that out here? Because I didn't want to, I didn't mean for it to just go off. But, you know, I mean, what, what's the name? Damien came and just guns blazing like he wanted to do something, you know? I mean, I, I just don't take kind to that. You know what I mean? Just the way I've been raised. We don't, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to, you know, we're taught to grab the bull by the horns. You know, if you want to come get some, come get some, right? You know what I mean? It's just how it is. Yeah. So why don't you take this time to uh, talk about what you intended to talk about on your show, and, and we'll, I'll just take it back to you on that one and let you just get your thoughts out. Oh, um, uh, brother, look, I, I just pray for all these amnesties. I, I know that only Allah guides, and sometimes Allah uh, decides to leave people in misguidance. Um, um, that's how Allah explained why everyone didn't convert to Islam. Um, I just prayed for him, brother. Damon's got some problems. You know what I mean? I, I think the brother said he's working at a gas station. He's 21, 22 years old. You know, he, he, he looks like uh, he's been through a, a rough childhood and a rough life. I mean, there isn't a lot of jobs in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Um, so I just pray for the brother. I pray for my family members. I pray for all these guys, Razi Kudras, you know, um, just, you know, maybe they'll slow down and stop and come out of Amadeus. And, you know, I'm just very sympathetic, um, towards them and, um, hoping that one day they wake up, brother. Inshallah, inshallah. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought you were also going to go live. So I, I wanted to make sure that I thought maybe you had some thoughts that you wanted to get out on your live stream. So I just want to make sure that you had the opportunity to also, you know, to also do that as well. Um, but um, Brother Oz has another question. So I'm going to bring him in real quick. Um, and and, and um, let me bring him in for, for him to ask a follow up question. Sure, sure. Um, okay. Hey, salam again. Alaikum salam. Welcome back, brother. Yes. So, Mike, I'm actually really fascinated about these different Muslim, I guess you can call them sects, um, and their, their room for influence. And they almost run like organizations. So I asked previously about the Aga Khan. Um, there's also, yeah, the Ahmadis. It's very fascinating to me just as a Sunni Muslim because we're not as organized. We're kind of, you know, we kind of just do our own thing, go to the mosque. But being an Ahmadi, when you saw this organizational level, how does that look on the day-to-day -day basis, like the money, the community events, all these sort of things? And, yeah, and how they influence politicians. So, yeah, thank you. Uh for that question, man. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Take it, man. Take it away. Let, let, let us know, uh, um, you know, how, how they in, in working there, man. You're, you're like the economy, you're an economy professor, right? So I'm sure you have a good idea of how the money Accounting. Account. I'm sorry. Yeah. There you go. go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so, so, uh, um, Amnes are robots. And I, I, I was saying this since I was 11, 12 years old. I was like, y'all are robots. You do whatever you're told. You don't ask any questions. You're in this organizational system. Um, it's not cool. I like the individualism of, of Islam. I can go to any mustard in America. It, even in my city, there's like three, you know, different people run them. There's a lot of freedom in Amadea. There's no freedom. It's a totalitarian re re regime. Uh, everyone uh, praises the Halifa. They'll send honey to have the Halifa bless it. They, they, they use a homeopathic medicine instead of regular medicine. In fact, the Halifa gave out some homeopathic uh, meds to stop coronavirus. You know what I mean? Like, and, and then a week later, he denied it. You know, um, so it's real robotic. I figured it out when I was 11, 12. You know, I'm more free spirit. I grew up in America, so it's like, how could I follow a robotic system, you know, uh, where everyone just does what they're told? They never question. You, you can never question the Khalifa. You can never question a local president. If you question a local president, you're questioning the Khalifa. So it's, it's real robotic, and it's not cool to be in. They're going to control every aspect of your life. Um, so, so that's why a lot of a, a lot of kids in America are getting out, and they're all becoming agnostic atheists. And I got love for them, and they don't like that, you know. But but they don't understand. As Muslims, we say peace, 
You know what I mean? When uh, when confronted with even people who insult the the prophet, um, the messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he had he used to have trash thrown on him. Brother, we don't flip out. We don't have a reaction. Whereas Amalis can't do that. If you insult Mr. Glam Ahmed or or the prophet, they they want to kill you. Like like um, one uh, this uh, a famous uh, ex Amali um, Afsal Opal from Rabwa. He wrote a book called Moderate Fundamentalists, where he described Amalia as their moderate fundamentalist. You know, mm -hmm. uh, they they do a, a niqab in Rabwa. It's a full niqab. Women are not allowed to even show their face. If they get caught with the face guard down, they'll get written up or whatever it is. You know what I mean? It's not cool. So I'm so happy to be, to be out of it. Uh, my life is so much better, and I hope other Amdis can get out. Inshallah, inshallah. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the, other, the other thing was about the... Um... You know about the the way that the inner like the day to day works out. So, um, are are they allowed to uh, have any kind of autonomy or independence? Like, I mean, uh, let me ask you: Is there? A, I see a lot of these guys on, on YouTube or I'm these now because of this thing. You know, I'm seeing these things, and I, I feel like a lot of them have like these polos that have like this Ahmadi Foundation logo on it. Like, it's like a dress code. Like they're in a uniform. Is that, is that like something like they, they they're supposed to do now or what? Yeah, brother. Look, I never wore their their little uniform with that with the 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 ramal, the both the black and white ramal, and the the black vest and the white. I never wore any. Look, I'm telling you, that's why they hated me. Cause I'd show up, my bucket is low, it's cocked to the right. <laughs> you know, I walk with a limp, and they're like, "Get this guy out of here. We have a problem with him. He's not cool." Well. Well, then, uh, then they find out who I am, and they're like, "Oh, he's like he's he's a, a an aeronautical engineer. Like what? Like what?" And he put what they they couldn't believe it. And I'm like, "Well, you know, not everyone is a robot and a nerd and weird. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, 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 I I come from you know the brother of Lazarus. I got some of that going. You know what I mean? Like, right, right, right. By the way, real quick, we try to interrupt you. Adil Ghani, Jazakumullah Khair for your uh, super chat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you, man. I appreciate it. Um, thank you for all the support that you guys give. Um, yeah, I unfortunately, like these guys are trying to make it sound like I'm begging for money. And all the money that we use goes back into the production, into bringing gas. It goes all back on sort of Mad Men Luke's as well, too. We don't, um, we don't, we don't, uh, I don't make a business out of this. Anyone who knows anything about YouTube knows that you make pennies in the dollar here. I mean, it would it wouldn't be enough to even buy a McDonald's sandwich. It's nothing. It's just it's just a way for fans to show that you know, or guests to show that they appreciate the content because people have to spend time. Like we spent two hours of our day. He's a family man. I'm a family man, and we spent time here to do this, right? So people appreciate that. You know, it's just a way of showing sort of a gift that people give. I know you won't get that concept because you have to give gifts to, to your leadership. But in our in, in in Islam, we're encouraged to give gifts to each other, right? It's, you have to give gifts to your leadership. We give gifts to each other, right? So that's just how right, it works. Right, right. So, that's true, Islam. So, uh, uh, um, so that reminds me, in Ahmadiyya, uh, they quote all the verses on, on zakat in the Quran to get janda out of Ahmadis. And that, that's not right. In America, we, 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 we pay sadaqah. It's not technically zakat because we're not giving our money to an Islamic government. It's mostly sadaqah, right? So um, yeah. they give them money and they, they don't, ever ask a question where it goes they don't see the account only 20 yeah. percent of the money that leaves america comes back you know what i mean so so and now yeah that's crazy yeah i mean just, just to clarify zakat can be given to anyone but um the thing is that when in islam in the government we have something called bait al-mal which is like the the, the the, the trust of the ummah, which uh, if, if there was a khalif and there was a government, he would see if there's people that need money, that don't need money, or of a local, um, a local, con uh, uh, um, what we call a, a amir or a governor of an area, he would decide whether someone, someone needs money, this and that. And so we have that. And it seems like they're trying to take advantage of that. And by the way, what's funny is as well, is that it looks like it's the same system that the NOI uses, the same system that the Aga Khan is used as well too. Yeah. The same system that all these various cults, the Scientologists use. All, this is a, a, a telltale sign of a cult movement. When you have right, right, right. money and, that and is look, due. If, if you don't pay, if you don't pay the basic janda, you can't vote. You, you can't play basketball 
at the local event. They will. In, they will <laughs> wait, 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 hold on. Is, is basketball a big thing among the Ahmadis? Like the young kids? That what it is? Like is that how they bring it? They have a basketball tournament. The reason I'm asking because Qasim Rashid used to come to our own masjid. We used to have a basketball tournament. And they would come in. And I remember people after a while would be like, "Hey, why is this guy coming up, bro? Like he ain't Muslim. Like he ain't supposed to be here. This is the Muslim, you know, basketball league. Like why is he here? You know, I think eventually he ended up not coming. But I, apparently, is this the way they use? Do, do, do they use like sports or basketball as a way to keep their young people at the center is that what this is about absolutely there's no other way uh because <laughs> all young people got no other reason to show up they're all they're all uh, uh agnostic atheists which you know uh th that's totally up to them but there's no the only reason i would go brother would be so because i could play in the tournament you know like i had a long running beef with, with, with the amdes in la you know what i mean so we'd show up to show out you know and it was a big deal they they have a national tournament um, every year, and and it's funny. It's it's funny. Young Amadis have a drinking problem, an alcohol problem, and the the president of the Amadia Jamaat. It's on my on my blog, Mirza Makfour Ahmed. He gives a report last year where he says uh, the majority of young Amadis are drinking alcohol and leaving Amadia. You know what I mean? So so they're desperate yeah. right now. You know, um, and uh, uh, basketball is one thing. In the Canadian Jamaat, they play a lot of basketball too. Um, that's all they got, bro. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, well, okay. the immigrant. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's interesting. Interesting. But anyways, um, I think we should probably just wrap this one up, brother. It's been about two hours. So I'll let you have the final words and then we'll just go ahead and close. I'll close out. So floor is yours, brother. Sure, sure. So so talking to, to uh, Damon and if you've seen the movie uh, a Friday After Next, that's the um, that that's the reason I'm saying it like that. But uh, you need medical help, brother. You're overly competitive. It's that's un-Islamic. Um, the way you're criticizing people is un-Islamic. Knock it off. The Ahmadiyya movement is responsible. Mirza Makfour Ahmed is the president of the Ahmadiyya. He's the Khalifa's brother, right? Um, he's responsible for what you guys are doing. He hasn't said anything. He knows what you guys are doing. Um, he 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 probably sent my family members after me. I'm quite sure that 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 he did. Um, that's why they're hounding me and chasing me. He's ordered all this silently and quietly, just like the way that they do a takfir. It's silent and quiet. Um, but nevertheless, brother, we, we pray for all you guys. We pray that uh, that Allah guides you. We pray that somehow uh, the, the the light um, turns on. I know that. Uh, um, through my videos, they learned for the first time that Mirza Glam Ahmed never led Salah. They lied about it after he died. And uh, uh, now they know he never gave a hutbah jamaah. He, he lied about his opium use. Um, and, um, it, you know, he's, it, it, he attacked his opponents. He, he had government help. You know, uh, look it all up. In the 90s, these guys couldn't look it up. Now you can look it up. Just go, go through my blog and challenge a reference. Uh, challenge any of my uh, academic work. You know, I, I recited the Quran for you guys. It's pretty easy. I've memorized over 40 verses if I put them all, all together. Um, and the Quran is repetitive. You know, I just need my, my good uh, reading glasses that day because I'm getting old. So I can't, you know, uh, like right now I can't read the comments, right? So, um, brother, we, we just pray for these guys. You know, uh, um, you know they, they, they need to think about it. Mr. Golan claims to have learned Arabic. In one night, How, brother, he claimed forty thousand roots. There's no such thing as forty thousand roots in the Arabic language. Like the entire argument, it didn't make it's nonsensical. But they had to make it up because all because he was going to start getting uh, Arabic books published, and, and and they wanted to say that he wrote them when really his ghostwriters wrote them. He had seven or eight ghostwriters and scribes. Um, it's a mess. Mm -hmm. It's a mess. And we pray for these guys, and that's my final message. For, for, for Damon, for Rezzi, uh, for uh, my family member, Tariq Chaudhary, um, Soheb Awam, I think his name is, all these other guys. If you guys are serious, come talk to us. Same thing with Akasim Rashid. If you're serious, come talk to us. And I'm still blown away that his sister came to Islam. Brother, his dad's a Murabi. That is the most yeah. embarrassing thing for them. I don't know if you want to let that be out there. I don't know if I spilled the beans, but I mean, I know who she was married to. I mean, like, I just, I mean, they got a kid together. I know, I know. Like, I grew up with 
No, his brother, his brother, his brother passed. I let him about with my homies. I mean, for like twenty five, we grew up in the same high, school, like the same junior high. Like we was homies, yeah. we hung out. So that's how I knew about it because I knew about them because they used to live in the area where my cousins used to live in. Um, and you know the sad thing is, think about it now. Like I'm gonna say this, Costum probably grew up in humble beginnings because the area they lived in wasn't that. It wasn't that prominent. I mean, it was. I mean, you know, it was like, eh, you know, a little bit. You know, I mean, lower, mid, lower end of middle class. It wasn't even like middle class right there. But so uh, we were always like, yo, you know, how come the dad ain't never around or anything like that? But anyways, we'll talk about that at a different show, whatever. It's not about costume or sheet. But point being is, um, make sure you go to the blog site, man. Make sure you go to. Um, I'm at the factcheckblog.com and, uh, and, and check out the material. Go to the, the uh, channel as well, too. Ahmadiyya Fact Check Blog as a, a YouTube as well. The brother has more content coming out. I'm sure there's previous content that he's done. So make sure you guys go check that out. Support his channel as well. Subscribe to him as well. Uh, as we can see, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the Ahmadiyya were afforded an opportunity to come on the show and to behave civilly and have a conversation about what we were talking about. And nothing resulted from that. It was fruitless. All we got was a bunch of aggressive behavior and ad hominems in the text, uh, accusations and allegations. And, you know, as Muslims, we can't make allegations without proof. All right. And so, um, again, this is what we got. Um, but uh, just a quick reminder, um, please, I started this new thing called uh, YouTube memberships. If you guys want to join in, I haven't. I, I've started doing a couple of private streams that are, that are um, done off the book. So um, I will be adding more private content. There's Patreon as well, too. I will be adding content there as well, like I do in a private stream. Um, but if you desire and you want more than the regular stuff we put out there, by all means, please go ahead and um, become a member. And uh, if you haven't already, if you're new here, subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified every time I go live because this one was a little bit late. It was random, but we decided to do it because me and Brother Bashir were talking over Twitter and they caused a Twitter storm. They were after us, so I figured let's just go live and talk about it and give them the opportunity to come on the show. But nonetheless, I think we're good here. So we're going to wrap up this show. Uh, inshallah, I have a stream tomorrow with my brothers on the Mad Mum Luke. So I'm going to be co-hosting there tomorrow. Make sure you check that out. We'll be in the studio. So inshallah, hope to catch you guys over there as well too. And then I'll be back this Sunday at 2 p.m. Central Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Time for my weekly live show. So make sure you guys are tuned in for that too, inshallah. And we will talk to you later, inshallah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We'll see you later.